Hello, everyone. Welcome to match one of the round of four here in the ASL season 15. And what an insane season this has been. We've had so many upsets. Uh, such an unusual lineup of players to have here. And um, I got to say, I'm, I'm super pumped. Before we get into this match, we do want to say to everybody who's watching, thank you so much for your support on Patreon. If you haven't signed up already, it's patreon.com forward slash ASL English. We hope to earn your support. Yeah, thank you very much, everybody. Uh, you know, you, you talk about good of a season it's been, and most certainly that is the case. I, I've been, like, kind of checking the comments when the videos come out, and it seems to be the consensus that this is a top three ASL season ever, right? So this is season 15 total, but, uh, it, yeah, it, everyone is kind of like, yeah, these, these matches have been insane. We've had very few poor matches. You remember that season where, like, 8-15 was, like, four-pooling people and, like, <laughs> yeah. you know, like, that season maybe not as good. This season, absolutely amazing. <laughs> yeah, this has been a really cool one. And it goes to show you that even though we get used to having certain players stay, you know, really um, on top of everybody else for sometimes four to five years at a time, this is a season where suddenly it's been a total shake-up. Tonight we're going to have best versus mind. Um, this is such an exciting uh, best of seven, by the way, that we're going to be going into. Uh, whoever takes it, it's going to be groundbreaking for the race and the player. We never uh, would have expected to see best in mind this far, especially with the stacked lineup we had for season 15. Um, but this is so exciting. Yeah, very, very unexpected. Uh, I can't really wait to see what they both have planned for this series. You know, it, Protoss vs. Terran has a huge amount of openers, and, uh, you know, there's a lot of different styles you can use for the opening in TVP, and Mind has definitely his own way of approaching uh, the game. Like, he's he's so cognitive. So I, I feel like tonight, Tasteless, you and I are both going to go home happy learning a lot, getting a lot of new ideas from these guys. Yeah, I look forward to it. Um, this is going to be a cool finals no matter who moves on. Uh, and we're going to be recording, by the way, the round of uh, four match two the following day that this is in here. So that match is actually probably happening right now as we're recording this one. So we're going to try to get these out as quick as possible for you. Uh, interesting to see the votes here, by the way, at the bottom of the screen. Best is heavily favored. And the two votes for mine here, it, it's so close, it's only four threes, two four threes. Yeah, yeah. Well, it, I'm not too surprised to see that, honestly. Like, mind, I watch so many of his games, and he's certainly really good in this matchup. But the top few Protosses just don't lose to Terrans anymore in the, the big matches. You know, there's, like, a lot of best of nines that happen in Korea or nine-game series. Uh, and, like, between Snow and Best Man... They barely drop a map. These guys are so god tier in this matchup. Uh, so I'm not too surprised to see the other pros saying, wow, this should be best favored. It does seem like best has really ironed out the few wrinkles that were left in his in his play. Um, he's played phenomenally in every matchup that we've seen. He has um, basically looked scarier than we've ever seen. And he always looked either very hot or he had some maybe questionable build orders, questionable decisions. Um, but this is going to be a really interesting season, especially against mine, someone who was a blast from the past, a true Terran beast, uh, and honestly, not played that well in several ASL seasons in the past. So it's going to be cool to see him reinvent himself now.이제 결승에 올라가는 선수가 나오는 4강 첫 번째 대결과 함께 하겠습니다. 도재욱 선수 박성균 선수, 박성균 선수 도재욱 선수 대결 결승전에 올라갈 선수 누가 될까요? 두 선수 중에 누가 올라가도 AS의 최초 결승 진출자가 됩니다. 먼저 도재욱 선수 이야기 나눠 보도록 하겠습니다. 이번엔 다르다. 진짜 다르다. 온라인의 도재욱이 아니라 오프라인의 도재욱. 
하지 온라인만큼 잘할 수 있다라는 팬들의 그 확신들 느껴지십니까? 어 일단은 팬분들이 되게 응원을 많이 해주셔가지고 네. 어, 너무 감사하고 오늘 그냥 다른 생각 없이 그냥 이고 싶은 생각뿐이에요. 오 시즌 2 이후에 올라오는 데까지 무려 7년이라는 시간이 네. 걸렸어요. 네네네. 네, 네. 정말 멀리 돌아왔습니다. 네네. 네. 항상 대회전의 도재욱은 우승 후보다 우승 후보다 했는데 대회에서 아쉽게 떨어진 장면들이 많았어요. 이번 시즌은요. 예, 상대 박성균이 기다리고 있어요. 어떠세요? 어, 일단 성균이가 이미 제가 한번 이겨본 경험이 있어서 자신 있고 오늘 꼭 제가 결승 진출하고 싶어요. 네. 그러니까 전 사장의 그런 분위기와의 기운들이 이번 시즌에 도재욱 선수는 우승하는 거 아니야 라는 이야기가 나올 수 있을 것 같은데 그 수많은 선수들 중에서 박성균을 만났을 때 결정이 됐을 때 어떤 생각을 하셨습니까? 어 일단은 성균이가 편하다는 게 아니고 일단 음. 저그를 만나기 싫어서 좀 성균이 응원했는데 오. 그래도 이렇게 딱 성균이 올라와서 제 시나리오대로 가고 있긴 한데 오늘 이기는 것까지 제 시나리오거든요. 네. 그래서 이겨야 될것 같아요. 어 그렇습니다. 자 그러면은 박성균 선수는 제주만 버리면 안 되잖아요. 지금 네. 도정 선수 우승 스토리에 네. 저그들을 제거해 주길 바랬는데 네. 그대로 네. 완벽하게 이 저그 라인을 지금 초토화 시켜 놨습니다. 어떠세요? 네, 안 그래도 반대쪽도 음. 영재가 이겼더라고요. 네. 아, 그, 저도 보면서 이게 우주의 기운이 모이고 아! 있는 건가? 네. 제 형을 위해서 오! 그런 또 생각도 들었는데 그래도 뭐 저는 사실 어. 제일 좀센 상대 만났다고 생각해요. 음. 제가 만약 결승을 간다고 쳤을 때 결승 상대보다 오히려 지금이 더센 상대로 생각하고 와. 그래서 준비를 또 열심히 했어요. 네. 그래서 준비한 대로만 되면은 뭐 이길 수 있을 것 같아요. 사실상 다른 선수 제외하고 오늘이 결승전이다 마인드예요. 아 그런 생각이 있어서 네. 와 그럼 가장 그 중에서 최고의 상대는 도적 선수고. 네, 아, 재욱이 형이 진짜 제가 계속 말했지만 요즘 잘해요. 네. 그래서. 진짜 쉽지 않은 상대인 것 어, 같아요. 네. 이 오프라인 무대에서 하지만 박성윤 선수의 큰 무대 수많은 팬분들 앞에서 우승을 했던 기록도 있잖아요. 아 있죠, 네. 도재욱은 없잖아요. 없죠. 네. 네. 그건 좀 타고 나야 되는 겁니까? 오프라인 이 무대에서 주각감을 이겨내는 게 글쎄요. 어떤 차이예요? 재욱 형 잘하는데 왜 없지 모르겠네요. 어! 네. <웃음> 분명히 잘한다. 그리고 이제 우승할 수 있다. 하지만. 대회 오프라인에 다르다라는 얘기 나오고 있어요. 왜 우승을 못 하는 거예요? 뭐 이번에 할 거니까 상관없는 어! 것 같아요. 네. 와! 진짜 이렇게 자신 있게 얘기한 게 정말 최초인 것 같은데. 박성 어 웃어요. 박성규 선수 보자마자 이야기하는 순간에 거의 뭐 사실상 결승 갔다는 생각 같은데요. 오늘 확실하게 지금 때려 잡으면서 올라갈 수 있는 게 자신감이 느껴지는 것 같은데요. 원래 뭐 뱀은 계속 안 되니까 어! 제가 이길 것 같아요. 네. 오늘 아예 뱀을 담궈 버린다. 그렇죠, 그렇죠. 네, 그럼 뱀처럼 오늘 먹어야죠. 오, 그럼 오늘은 그 정도로 전체적인 분위기와 뭐 분위기 그리고 이제 실력적인 부분 그 상대 전적 부분에서 앞서 나오고 있는데 그래도 박성윤 선수 경기 준비 잘하잖아요. 확실하게 괴수님은 네. 지금 때려잡을 수 있는 뭔가 전략 준비했을 것 같은데요. 그 뭐. 뱀이라고 했는데 예. 어릴 때도 영화 아나콘다를 봤는데 오! 아나콘다가 재욱이 형만은 사람 그냥 잡아먹더라고요. 와! 제가 잡아먹을 생각하고 왔거든요. <웃음> 네, 그래서 오늘 뭐 준비는 열심히 했습니다. 네. 그렇지 그렇지. 그냥 온라인상 스크린상의 그 개수랑 실제 개수랑 크기 차이가 좀 나니까. 아 그렇죠. 네. 오 그래요. 아니 오늘 잡아먹을 준비를 했다. 자기 자신 독배, 독사를 넘어지 아나콘다. 근데 그 아나콘다가 결국 죽는 걸로 알고 있거든요. 아! 네. 죽지 않을까 싶어요. 네. 네. 어 과연 오늘 그 결과 나오게 될지. 그럼 오늘 예상 스코어는 어떻게 돼요? 저는 한 4대 1에 4대 2 정도 예상해 봅니다. 4대 1에 4대 2 정도 네. 변수 없습니까? 큰 변수 있다면 4대 0. 4대 0. 네. 1 경기 잡아내면 4대 0까지도. 네. 와 그래요. 박성규 선수는요? 저는 오늘 4대 0으로 못 이기고요. 네. 네. 이기려면은 실세트 가야 이길 것 같거든요. 아 그래서 네. 저는 뭐 최대한 장기전으로 네. 하겠습니다. 네. 알겠습니다. 그럼 오늘 팬분들 앞에서 또 각오한 말씀 박성윤 선수 부탁드리겠습니다. 네, 또, 또 이제 응원도 많이 와주셨는데 다들 너무 감사드리고 제가 그뭐 그런 얘기가 있더라고요. 우승이 8년마다 한다고 음. 제가 8년 전에는 또 다른 또 이제 스타즈리그에서 우승했었는데 그 8년 주기 이번에 한번 지킬 수 있도록 하겠습니다. 네. 네. 자, 이어서 도적 선수도 오늘 좀 많은 팬분들이 응원의 메시지 보내주고 계신데 팬분들에게 결승력 각오한 말씀 해주시죠. 어, 제가 이번 4강 준비하면서 정말 
4일 동안 100게임 넘게 연습했거든요. 어. 근데 너무 즐거웠어요, 연습하는 오. 게. 그래서 한번더그 즐거운 감정을 느껴보고 싶었습니다. 네. 자, 이제 4강전 대결을 기다리고 있습니다. 여러분들의 그 열정적인 응원이 이번 시즌 선수들의 큰 힘이 되어주고 있습니다. 여러분의 뜨거운 박수 함성으로 4강전 대결을 시작하겠습니다! 이렇게 팔강 가는 게 어려울 줄 몰랐어요. 남들은 팔강 그냥 가잖아요. 근데 저는 너무 힘들더라고요. 그 팔강 가는 자체가. 굉장히 힘든 싸움을 기다리고 있고요. 죽음의 조 최악의 조라는 평가를 받고 있는 상황. 오히려 평가가 안 좋을 때또더 편하게 있을 것 같아요. 최대 가장 먼저 16강 진출! 아, 그냥 힘으로? 그냥 아, 도재욱이 내 시즌 만에 팔강에 올라가는 도재욱 선수, 김성규 선수의 대결. 아, 배수! 선수가 여러 번 도전을 했지만 번번이 패배를 하면서 상황으로 가는데 성공한 적이 없었잖아요. 이제 이변에 이변이 나오고 있어요. 김태경 선수를 잡아낼 거라니요. 공을 때려잡고 발간 진출. 8강에서 불패를 자랑하던 김명훈을 두번 보내면서 시대 4월은 독자의 캐절 이 벽이 제일 두꺼웠을 것 같거든요 딱이 벽만 무너뜨리면 더 위까지 갈 자신이 있는데 이 벽을 넘기가 너무 어려웠습니다 It's time to start this best of seven to see who will go on into the finals of the ASL season 15. Um, I don't know, Artosis. What are your thoughts going into this? I mean, this is so exciting. This is so different than the, the players we normally cast. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I, I do think that best is a little bit favored here. His Protoss vs. Terran is unbelievably strong. Uh, but... I don't want to count Mind out. Mind is so incredibly intelligent, and I think he's going to have uh, a very intelligent approach to the series, but it's going to have to be, like, the best Mind has ever played if he's to beat best in a best of seven here tonight and go on to the finals. Yeah, you know, it, it's wild that he's here now. Uh, let's remind uh, some of the people that have been watching StarCraft 1 since the very beginning. We have a pretty big chunk of viewers that actually came... Uh, into uh, watching ASL, uh, like as as that being their first time being exposed to uh, StarCraft One or StarCraft Remastered. So a lot of these people are probably weirded out that Mind has made it this far, but Mind <laughs> was one of the greatest Terrans ever in the past. Um, yeah, I'll never forget yeah. that finals he had versus Bisu, um, stopping him dead in his tracks at a moment we thought that Bisu would not ever be stopped. Uh, and would continue to reign. I guess he still is pretty damn good at Protoss, but uh, this guy had major milestones historically as Terran. Um, and then, of course, Best, who's been around in ASL for a long time. He's looked very good, but he seems to have finally fixed all the small little flaws in his play. This is going to be a great match. Yeah, yeah. And, and to speak more about their past, like, just to throw this out there, guys, like, Best is one of the six dragons. There was this period of time where there were six Protoss players that were way, way better than everybody else. Uh, he was considered the fourth best Protoss in the world for a long time during the Kespa era. And he has been to a finals before. Uh, he, he went to a finals in MSL where he ended up losing against July Zerg, one of the most legendary players of all time. Uh, so still hungry for that big championship. And yeah, Mind, of course, an MSL champion himself. Uh, yeah, it's, it's 
like a battle of two of the best players from the hardest part of the Kespa era. So can't wait to see them go at it now because they're both like in in top top form right now. Uh, I should also remind the viewers or those that just tuned into the final four and finals. This was almost an entirely Zerg Final Four. Uh, we had a huge <laughs> yeah. amount of Zerg players that uh, survived into the round of 16 and then into the round of eight. Um, and somehow in, in our Final Four matchups, we do not have a, a Zerg versus Zerg or a Zerg versus, um, yeah, I mean, it's it's a PBT. What else can I say? Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> you know, that's, it's a funny thing that happens sometimes. It does look like we're gonna end up with a, a, a bracket that is gonna come out with one race easily toppling the rest but not the case uh, kind of cool to see the the whole game kind of self-correct <laughs> but uh, yeah. as, as we start to whittle down player after player we it's actually kind of funny it's like to to win these more recent asl seasons it feels like basically since flash went away it's like you just have to be good at killing zergs uh <laughs> like for instance last season the big thing royal did he beat a lot of zerg players to get to that championship match like it's it's not like he was beating a ton of terrans and protosses it was mostly zergs uh, on the path until the finals but yeah and that's kind of similar here like both these guys destroyed zergs in that previous round and uh it is kind of funny because now they have to play this other matchup that hasn't seemed to be very important for them in the tournament so far so it's it's hard to put your finger on exactly what it's going to look like. Now, since Mind has come back and been competing in some of the previous ASLs, I'm not going to lie, man. He hasn't really looked that good. I it, my, I personally had sort of written him off as someone who, who was always, you know, because of his incredible past, going to be good enough to qualify for an ASL because he is that much of a legend, but never somebody I would expect to see in a finals or a final four. Whatever he's done, he is really adjusted. He looks really clean. All of his decision-making seems really smart. He mm. seems to be approaching the game very much from his own angle. It doesn't seem to be a copy of uh, the, the meta in the last couple seasons. It doesn't seem to be, you know, borrowed from light or flash. He really is approaching this in a very oh, yeah. different way. Um, and it's going to be a lot a of really... fun to see how he does this. That's a really good way to put it, actually, Tasteless. He did very quietly come up. I, I happen to know just because, you know, I have that Artosis Cast channel on YouTube where I cast, like, a ton of Korean matches, and Mind was, like, quietly going through some of the smaller tournaments in Korea, like the CNSL, and doing really, really well. Uh, so I've, I've kind of seen him rising up recently. I really think it just comes down to he's been playing much more now than he has in the past. Like, he is very, very active at the moment. And, you know, like you said, he was one of the best Terrans in the world. Like, it really was down to, is it going to be Mind or is it going to be Flash to re lead Terran back, you know, 15 years ago? Uh, and he is, he is looking great. And I love that you say that he's not copying anyone because it's really, really true. He never has really copied anyone. He has his own style, and you can really see that. He, like, really thinks everything out and makes very good decisions. Now, Best has always been very, very, um, just so powerful with Protoss in these very fundamental and straightforward ways. Uh, our criticisms of him in the past were that he maybe didn't choose the best builds in a best of five or a best of seven. It really is a, an art form trying to navigate a long series on a bunch of different maps. Mm -hmm. um, and he seems to have improved that. He's also winning in very straightforward ways, which is kind of remarkable. You know, sometimes when we have a Protoss player start to really pull ahead, it could be because of a lot of weird cheeses. He seems to be basically strong arming every opponent. And PVT <laughs> especially, his macro has been so beastly. Uh, it makes me, uh, at this point in time, more afraid for Terrence than maybe almost any other Protoss. You know, we had Snow in the past be so good with Reavers uh, and really multitask and eke out damage. But it almost seems like Bess is just able to battering ram and break into locations better than any Protoss we've ever seen in the matchup. You're right. He's he's really. We were joking about how he's like shoving the square peg through the circle hole, and he's it's it's actually kind of opposite to what Mind is doing. Mind is like making really great decisions that are leading him to victory, and then Bess is like my macro good. Peg go through all. Dude, he is, he is he's just Hulk smashing, smashing people. It's yeah. it's crazy. I mean, I want to talk about this more when we get into games, but like he breaks positions. I there's so many times I've said in my head, 
this is impossible. And then I watch him do it. Um, yeah. So as you guys can see, long evening ahead for us here. Seven possible maps total with best versus mind. Uh, and we're going to start this off on Heartbreak Ridge. Let's do this, guys. The winner of this best of seven moves on to the finals. The ASL season 15. Starting off here on Heartbreak Ridge. Over on the right side, we have Best. And on the left side, we have Mind. Interesting first map to kind of get the feel for the match because it is it is one where you can see some pretty aggressive plays. Uh, we've seen some Terrans try to be aggressive. That hasn't worked out so well. We've seen some Protosses do some... Uh, some nasty proxies, but it doesn't look like Best is going to do one of those this game. Yeah, this had so many cheeses when it first came out, but it seems like a lot of that has dried up um, in that, you know, a lot of the tempting weird cheeses that you could do by taking advantage of the area over their natural expansion. It just seems like everybody kind of knows how to deal with it. Um, and so people are leaning instead into macro games. Packed audience here tonight. Um, oh, yeah. I mean, ASL has been blowing up this season. So many um, viewers coming on. They've moved this round of eight into the Jomshil Theater, which is just next to Lotte Tower, the tallest building in the country. It's considerably bigger than the regular ASL studio. The mm -hmm. ASL and GSL studio, by the way, that you're used to seeing, it's the same place. Um, and, and basically, they moved it down to this larger area so they could fit more people. Yeah, and a lot of people here. They, and I, I mean, they, they really should be. This is so epic. I think most of the people there are probably Best fans. Best has been such a mainstay for Protoss. Like, during, like, the dark ages of, of StarCraft One, where StarCraft One came close to dying but still kept going, Best uh, was, like, the best or one of the very best Protosses during that time. Like, he's not one of the guys that really went over and, and played a bunch of pro StarCraft II then returned like a lot of these other players are. Yeah, and um, for those that aren't really familiar with that, there was a period where a lot of the Kespa players weren't allowed to switch over, the ones that were on Kespa teams for StarCraft II. So you had like the first wave of Korean pros or semi-pros switch over. And then there was a whole bigger wave that included like Flash and Jadong and these guys trying StarCraft II out. And that went on for a few more years um, and, you know, then some of them switched back. StarCraft Remastered came out. That revitalized the scene as well. Um, but you're right. I can't recall ever casting Best or even seeing Best play StarCraft II in my whole casting career. Yeah, he might he might have played in that weird joint pro league. I assume that he did do some matches in there for StarCraft II, but, like, he never really made the transition. You know, there was a, there was a small amount of players that just were like, nah, we're staying. Uh, and, you know, obviously there was... At this point, most of the players have actually gone back. Uh, you know, the, the StarCraft II scene in Korea definitely a lot smaller at this point. Uh, but take a look at this, Tasteless. He's actually he's going to go a second gate after that, that Nexus, so pretty heavy Dragoon oh. production likely to come. Oh. That's why the factory's <laughs> that far out. Okay. So he makes a depot here. I've never quite seen a Terran try this, or at least not yeah. in the modern era. Um, and I think we're kind of seeing why, right? Um, he, <laughs> yeah. has, he has the depot up, but, you know, that's nothing that a couple probes can't prevent. Um, and, you know, the factory's close to being done. I thought, I, I'm sorry, guys, I got the timing all mixed up when I saw that. I thought maybe there was, like, already a vulture started or something weird oh. like that. Like, <laughs> maybe there was more to it than that. I guess the depot is just literally to block probes from transferring as quickly. But here comes the one base uh, rush mm. that really at this point in time has to work or uh, Mind is going to be in a lot of trouble. This is, I believe, seven SCVs, Marines, a Vulture. Another depot wall comes through Artosis. Wow. And he gets very lucky on what side that SCV goes to. If that had gone out to the other side, this would be a lot easier to break. But as is the Marines get in on top of some of these probes, Zealot still working on this depot. The probes cannot get away. Oh my god, look at this opener from Mind. He's getting into position. He started his bunker. The SCV is going to block. This is looking really good for Mind right now. Yeah, he's trying to kill the SCV that's making the bunker. I almost feel like Mind, uh, uh, 
might have actually pulled this off. There's more Marines coming down the bunker, so close to finishing. One, no, two Marines are going to get inside. The, the Dragoon is now going to be forced away. The Vultures are actually chasing this, trying to do any additional damage. Now, you've got to be careful because the Vultures uh, are not strong against one Dragoon. I guess he might have this mapped out perfectly that all you really want to do is kill the last Dragoon. It's such a funny interaction that we're seeing here. The Vulture, yeah, it does live. Yeah, you're, you're quite right. He definitely had that mapped out exactly that, like, okay, it's got enough shields gone. We can actually just go kill it with two Vultures right now. Uh, and very important because otherwise that Dragoon is going to wreak some havoc. Now he's killed the, command, uh, the, the Nexus. He doesn't have his own command center back at home. And Best does have two gates. It's not like he lost a ton of workers or something. So let's let's see how Best tries to recover from here. Yeah. Now, you know, Terran beat up Protoss pretty badly, but let's not forget that, um, you know, Terran had to pull a lot of SCVs, so it's not totally comfortable back at home for mine. Um, but honestly, killing the Nexus, I mean, that's a success. This is a playable position for Protoss, believe it or not. It might look pretty dire, but uh, as long as you didn't lose that many workers, you can kind of hang. Um, and he's planting these mines set up for a run by. So he wants to be very sure that there's no opportunities here for the Dragoons to wrap around and do any real damage. The tank's coming out. You always got... Oh, he's not repairing this. Yeah, you got to repair that. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Okay, so you need to keep that up. He is laying some more mines as well. And those mines, the way he's laying the mines, like he can't really get them out front. You see he wasted two of them there. But these mines are to make it so that the Dragoons cannot chase down the tank and snipe it. Because, you know, when you start getting up three, four Dragoons, you can kind of just run up and kill the tank. Uh, but here he continues to put damage down. This is a very kind of gross position for best. This is not something you really want to try to fight your way out of when there's mines, a tank, four Marines in a bunker, a bunch of SCVs for blocking and repairing. But it looks like mine is going to turn around. He realizes, okay, best isn't going to come out until he's ready to break it. So no reason to force the issue. There's basically two approaches from the Protoss' perspective in a moment like this. There's there's perspective one, which is tear down the contain. Um, and, and Protoss can do that. They could do that right now if they had an observer. The other is to try to get units like probes and dragoons on the outside, which clearly is what's happening here. Oh, my God. He might not. Oh. <laughs> oh, no. That is such a well-placed mine. That's like really his practice is built so well. Because that's exactly where Protoss wanted to put it on the high ground where they can fight anything. But one well-placed mine, that was so strong. Now, and he finds um, that Nexus immediately too, Tasteless. Like, you can definitely tell the prep is there from mine. Looking very strong in this opener. Now he's got a couple of Dragoons out on the map. And any Terran that really tried to overcommit to protecting the bunker and the mines outside the Protosses. Uh, destroyed second base. That's where the Dragoon pushes can be pretty scary. But what he's going to do is put his own pressure on here and probably try to force out Siege Mode, uh, which is already actually set up here. I guess if you don't have Siege Mode, you probably would be at risk of dying to a push like this. Uh, and so that's what's happened. Siege Mode is up. These uh, Dragoons are eventually going to clean this up. That Nexus is going to finish, and we might even see another Nexus made over here where this natural base was uh, right when this game started. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you're definitely right about that. He's going to make a third Nexus immediately. Like, he's already going up towards Reaver Tech, and he went over. He saw it. There's, it's like, okay, there's turrets. There's a tank in siege mode. And when you put all that together, Terran can't afford enough units to attack. So Best is free to go up to three Nexus from here. He's going to get the Reavers, which can help with pushes and do some harassment. And honestly, it like, this game looks like it's going to stabilize into something that, if you hadn't seen the beginning, would look pretty normal other than the location of that bottom right base. Yeah, that's correct. I mean, this is sort of ending up in the same normal place that we would have expected it to be. I think Best did a good job uh, both holding that, uh, recovering. Um, and, you know, it's, it's not that easy. If the, if the Protoss gets rushed pretty early on and doesn't handle themselves correctly, Terran is already catapulted so far ahead. It's, it's an easy game. But we've got the shuttle out now. We've got a Reaver inbound here. And we're going to see if there's any real openings where these Reaver shots can do any damage to mine. Yeah, I don't think that there's much of an opening, honestly. This is some good building placement. Kind of interesting depots there. <laughs> Those are, they're kind of like blocking depots uh, to stop some of these drops from, from being able to do a very good job. Uh, but yeah, he's got the turrets. He's got a good spread of tanks. 
everything looks everything looks sewn up tight. So I think that Bess is just going to have to macro up. Like there's no real opportunity for damage as of yet. Yeah, I basically agree. Um, and you know, on that note, uh, looking into a longer game, it's very hard for the Terran to take a third base quickly here. Um, you know, it's one of the first things you want to look for as a Terran player on a map is like how how accessible is your actual third base. Um, and this is one where, like, it's just kind of hard to get, which is one of the reasons why Best is so eager to get his own shuttles and reavers out, is if you can really abuse shuttles and drops and um, take take um, pot shots at siege tanks as they're sieging up, only to then run back out to safety, um, that can really delay a Terran taking a third base. And sometimes Terran, when they can't take a third base very easily, they just don't. They go for a two-base timing attack, and that could be what we're looking at uh, this game turning into here from mine. Yeah, adding those additional factories, like if you go up to four, like that's pretty comfortable to take that, that third base with, but when you're adding five or six factories, like that just almost every single time that'll turn into an attack. I don't know if an attack can work right now. Like I'm not, I'm not sold on an attack working. I feel like... If you have solid uh, Reaver Micro, you're going to slow it down enough that you just have an overwhelming amount of Dragoons and Zealots. Okay, he does throw down the third command center, so that, that makes a lot more sense for mine. Yeah, he's going to see the Reavers just out here. This is one of the oldest tricks in the game, uh, was having a Reaver outside of a Terran's base and then firing, and when they tried to siege up, you just pick it up and scoot it a little bit further back. Um, and basically making the Terran really fight and possibly risk overextending um, if you're not um, too close. So see, he'll do exactly that and just park it back a little bit further out. The Goliaths can take out the Observer. That makes it a little bit harder for Protoss to have a clean read on the movement here from Terran. And if I can just go big picture for a second here, we were talking about Best and his busts. There are so many games where I have seen what I thought was a Terran that just could not actually be attacked or broken at all. And Best will somehow come in there. It almost looks like a broadsword on the minimap or like cloud sword <laughs> from Final Fantasy VII just stabbing through a base. They'll have this long <laughs> line of units run through in what looks like an inefficient moment. And then actually that zealot in the front gets all the way to the tank that sits in siege mode in the back. Yeah, and everything blows up, and I do think at this point in time, best is maybe actually the best at that. And I know that's very basic Protoss play, but he really does it better than I think anybody else we've seen. Yeah, there there is an an art form and a science to doing that. Like uh, you can definitely tell some people don't know how to do it. You can't just like attack move everything in. Uh, it's it's a little bit more complicated. It's about like letting the goons go up and clear some of it, and then zealots come in kind of in waves and. Uh, he certainly does it very well, and we might end up seeing something like that because you see it's like he's loading up speed shuttles with zealots, and look at the amount of zealots he's making. Like, this really shows us that he is getting ready for an attack. Yeah, it's one of these tricks where you make, like, 12 Dragoons and then only make zealots with shuttles, and all the zealots are only there to eventually pull spider mines in or to draw the fire from other siege tanks onto onto uh, their own siege tanks. And I think we're going to see him set this up. So this is 13 minutes. Let's not forget the Protoss lost uh, their natural. And we're about to go up to four base. We're almost at 170 supply. The oh counterattack is really good. Mind is so smart. He knows that basically Best wants to end the game like by breaking this position right now. That's basically his plan. Oh, dude, it, this this could be a game decider. Like, that's a lot of probes going down. What does Best do? He's just kind of, he's sending Zealots up to die to the Vultures right now. Well, he's only making Zealots because what he wanted is for these Zealots to come in with the next wave and try to break this. Also, we had a shot of it a second ago, but the deep, that yeah, this depot and the second one that's being made is so good because that'll draw Dragoon fire. That can really trip up the path into these units. Now, is Best going to try for it anyways? Let's see. I don't think Three you can shuttles. attack that. It's tasteless. Can you? I don't think you can. Like with the depots, the mines, the missile turrets, it, I can't imagine Best actually breaking that. And especially as mine supply goes up, maybe if he had hit immediately before those depots were done. But looking at this right now, like 174 supply against 138, it is a big army supply lead for Best. 
but it really doesn't look like a position where he can just break break mine's position. Okay, a scan over here. This is this might be one of the weirdest losses we've seen in a long time for this matchup. He basically just lost a bunch of workers and then didn't send his army back. And then lost even more. Now there's a siege tank that can try to shell these probes. My god. That shot far. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> yeah, that, that's some pretty good harassment. Gets seven kills on that one siege tank. The vultures will get cleaned up here as well. He actually kills the probe that's mining through the back there. Uh, mine is doing fantastically, but has not been able to actually secure the third. So this is becoming highly problematic. Like, a lot of good things have happened for mine this game. But this is... Like, this third is so late that you... It's possible that you end up losing just because your third base is so late. You know, that does happen to Terrence occasionally. He's He has the shuttle and reaver basically sitting, yeah, right down here at the bottom. He's going to make Terran do everything possible to try to come back over here and get this. The Goliaths are now chasing this. And, you know, he basically can take these shots as, as best he can. And the moment that he's uncomfortable, he's going to try to scoop the Reaver up again and get back out. One Reaver goes down. I would I would say that this is a slight mistake to not get a Wraith in this situation. Like, this could have been cleaned up very, very quickly. I think... And here, Light has actually been doing this a lot lately in TVP. Even though he has Goliaths, he'll always get a Wraith against this type of play. It's just because you can... Stuff like that that we just saw you clean up super quickly, super efficiently. So, a little bit of a mistake there from mine, but finally he'll have that third base up. Okay, he's coming down now with the shuttles. And, um, you know, it, it, once Terran has this spot, you kind of don't want to ever touch it, this Protoss. And we've even seen Terrans, they'll, they'll make a command center actually uh, not in the in the proper spot, but like to the left of this mineral patch, you kind of mine long distance. <laughs> it, it's hard for Terran to get the third, but after they've got it, they've got it. See, I thought, okay, there's a command center over there. I saw the cluster of mines and thought on the mini map that was the CC. Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> and double oh, yeah, Robo I've seen that now. as well. He's getting the oh, second double Robo. Robo. This okay. has become a lot more popular. I feel like this is a really fun kind of modern way to approach the game. Uh, in that, you you know, you never run out of observers. You can make shuttles without having to overvalue them. And just like a recall, um, you could just drop units inside the main and probably not lose anywhere near as much. And I've never quite seen it like this, which is like mass elevatoring of units. Mm. But I guess who is who is there to stop you from doing exactly this, right? He's yeah. already got so much coming through here. Um, That's highly annoying. He's killing depots. He's actually going to supply block him very likely. Like, And you've got to send all these vultures back. He's storming the vultures as they come in. Dragoons are coming in now. This is the slowest recall I've ever seen, but it is really working. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't mind him even go up a little bit further here just to drop on top of the tanks. He's going to pull some more of the units further into the back, making the Terran really do that legwork to get back there. Um... This is wild, Artosis. I've never quite seen the no. elevator technique used with a bunch of shuttles in speed at once in a Terrence main, but it really makes me think, like, I guess, yeah, why not just try something like this? Well, this was the only weak point for mine. He had no mines in his main base. That is, that is like a cardinal sin of TVP. You've got to put mines in your base when your opponent has shuttles. Uh, and he just, he didn't have that defense, and now he's... Lost a fair amount of depots. It's taking a long time to clean up. Like he's his vultures are being very inefficient in the cleanup as well. So this has been pretty annoying for him. All right, he's going to come here and try to save his base. A lot of probes are probably going to be killed here. He can unload whatever he has. But again, a yeah. lot of workers picked off. Ouch. Well, uh, I feel like he should have targeted the workers rather than the cannon there. Uh, obviously, a lot is going on. It's hard to get everything down as you want it. But, um, uh, you know, unfortunately, he doesn't kill all the workers. But, it, you know, Mine has secured his main base now. He's trying to get this fourth base up in Mining. Not a lot of units over here. And Best is on top of attacking it. So we've got the tanks pretty far out, honestly. Um... I don't know how well mine can hold this. This has been such a different EVT, honestly, just to cast and try to follow. Looks like the tanks are going to try to come close here. He can actually unload right on this. There's so many mines, Artosis. Oh, my God. 
there was actually so many mines they all blew each other up really quickly and the damage wasn't yeah. as much as I thought it would be. So that was yeah. actually maybe lucky from mind how that turned out. I, I could have seen everything there blowing up. Uh, but he does hold it. He's going to hold that fourth base location. And, you know, he's keeping his supply up high. He's at like 150 with, uh, you know, two fresh bases. So that's like really playable still. Uh, looking at this game, you know, you've got to remember, there's not a lot of bases on Heartbreak Ridge. So once Mind really secures these four, he can actually push to the bottom right and maybe even expand towards the center. He's coming in again, Artosis. God, that's a We've lot of shuttles. <laughs> it's a big unload. Um, and again, you know, the splash damage can be transferred onto the other SCVs and tanks. Um, it is ultimately all wiped out. He does push him away. I don't know how many SCVs exactly were killed there. Um, it would have been nice to have some Psy Storms thrown in there as well. But, you know, Best can basically keep doing this. We should also watch pretty closely the very top left uh, location. Yeah. Because it, that's probably going to be the last base that could be taken by either side. Yeah, especially for Best. I honestly could see this game morphing into something where... The, the final battle is mine taking the center. Like, I could I could see that here, really. Like, yeah, he's so turtled everywhere. And this is, like, the composition Best is going for has a hard time finishing Terran. It's, like, really good for battles. It's good for harassment and stopping bushes. But if mine continues this very turtled play and just kind of pushes towards the center, like, that's that could be, in this really weird circumstance, a real base. Yeah, you're right. Lots of zealots are being made here without very many dragoons to support. I feel like this is the least number of dragoons I've seen in a PvT in a long time. Um, he's kind of just smashing zealots into him over and over, which is fine. Zealots are great versus tanks, but they're not so great against vultures. And so there's these moments where we see these kind of funny numbers of vultures, like five or six, actually take on 12 or more um, <laughs> zealots. And this is definitely one of those games. Um, so Terran is mining from 6 o'clock. Uh, I think the Terran's natural should mine out actually pretty soon. Yeah. Um, Protoss, yeah, the main is mined out. He's not even mining gas at his main right now. Um, but, gosh, I don't know. I mean, I feel like Vest hasn't really made enough of an impact in any way that Mind is actually behind. He just got bases later, but when you don't have that many bases on a map like this, that can end up kind of working out for you. You know, the Protoss is going to mine out more quickly, and then they're not going to have anywhere comfortable to go. Yeah, yeah, that's that's the big problem for my, for, uh, for Best right now, right? Like, he's losing 12. I thought mine might push to the bottom right, but this actually, in a lot of ways, makes more sense because it blocks the top left base, too. So this this push from mine, he is really doing it, man. He's got this high ground position. He's throwing out some amazing defense matrixes here. And as long as he continues to rally and reinforce this, he's going to kill 12 o'clock. And I think Best has dried up. I don't see much of a path to victory here for Best. I think especially in that last engage, I think we saw Best, you know, try to come in and crack open that 6 o'clock base. He overextended. It created Mine's own opening to then push up and take out 12 o'clock. And I mean, where do you go right now? There's basically one base you can take in this position, maybe. And that's going to be 12 o'clock, which is, has already been denied. The upper left could eventually be gobbled up by mind as well. Uh, and the center is just a base that Terran could maybe take in, in a certain type of game. Unlikely Protoss can actually hold that. You know, honestly, denying 12 o'clock is a, is a win condition here for Terran. Like, Protoss can't play yeah. against 3-2 mech with four base. Like, you'd, you'd yeah. have to be on carriers specifically. Like, you'd have to have a good amount of carriers, which obviously he can't get into right now. His economy right. can't support something like that. So, like, when it's when it's this type of style from both sides, he, that's actually really smart because I was thinking of all these different ways for mine to approach a, a victory, like killing bottom right, taking the middle, but just cutting right up through the center and killing 12 o'clock. Look at, look at poor Protoss, man. He's mining from three bases against mining from two bases from Terran, and Mind is, in fact, going to go for that center expansion. Yeah, and I mean, what does Protoss really do from here? These expansions are always funny looking because they're not exactly set up for a command center to be neatly placed and you can mine the minerals from uh, optimally, but you kind of don't really care 
Yeah. You know, <laughs> it, at this point in time, when the Terran goes up to a fifth base, it's so uncomfortable. And I think Mine can play a, a pretty passive game from here. I don't think he even has to necessarily push. I think he, should, he might even be better to just do the snipes like this with the Vultures and then just look and wait for a Nexus to show up somewhere and then go kill it. Yeah, yeah. And in fact, it's like, is Best even going to try to take a Nexus against this? I think he might just try and attack. I'm not sure where he can do the attack. I don't think that you can use the elevator strategy again. I don't think you can attack that center easily. It's very small choke points there. I'm not really sure. I think Best is up against the ropes. This is going to be his final big army. So he needs to make something happen with the army he has right now. Because he's not going to max out again. Like, what he has, like, this is whatever supply he ends up on here, this is the highest we're going to see for the rest of the game. I think you're probably right. And it looks like he wants to try to come around. Now, is he going to... Oh, no, never mind. He's going to actually just try to dive in on this base. Bass is so strong at these kind of moves. He unloads. There's some storms coming down. Really good storms on the Vulture bikes. That may allow a lot more of these zealots to just kind of uh, reach the targets that are best for them. Um... But, man, there's so many tanks. I think Best probably just lost. I think he has to tap out. Yeah. We've got to go to game two, giving Mind a 1-0 to zero lead here uh, in this fight to get to the final. Yeah, that was an amazing first game, i got to say. Really felt like Mind was well prepared. It even, it, honestly, this game felt like Best gained an advantage for a little bit. And then, yeah. like, that, those elevators in the main were really good. But Mind played so methodically. And the choice to kill 12 o'clock and then expand to the middle, I think it was like basically perfect decision making. I'm like just so impressed by our Terran player. Yeah, and we saw Mind um, just sort of let Best try to force something, and that's when Best lost too much. And it's not a far distance to travel up north and take out that base. Yeah, it's a, it's a very thin map, actually. It's like one of the smaller maps overall. So like that north to south cut is something that Terran does not have that hard of a time with. Uh, and now that he's re-sieged up, everything is super turtled. He's got way more income than best, way more supply than best. There's really, there's nothing left. Like, you can't re-break that. Look at how many turrets he's making. He's spread his tanks really well. He's laying mines all over the place. Uh, I think it's just a matter of a minute or two before best has to just tap out. There's just nothing left. Yeah, uh, I'm kind of surprised we're still in the game, <laughs> honestly. Yeah, yeah. I, I thought I summed it up and we were going to be out of this pretty quickly, but I guess this is a fight to get to the ASL finals, right? We can let Best see if he can try to figure something out, but really the numbers just aren't there, and the fact that he's not mining, uh, unless he were to somehow break open the middle spot and then Terran couldn't reclaim it, and then Terran couldn't stop the, the, uh, the Protoss from taking 12, then maybe, but I mean, this just isn't enough. Yeah, he's going to fight with his final army here. Throws down some good size storms and everything, but it, obviously not even close to good enough. GG is called, and Mind wow. takes the lead. It's a best of seven, so 1-0 is not that big a deal, but a great opening game from Mind. Yeah, that was a lot of fun to cast. Um, and Best, you know, he is looking very strong. Let's not forget that was a Vulture Marine SCD bunker rush onto <laughs> Nexus first. That best survived. He reclaimed two bases. The game seemed to stabilize, and mine was extremely patient at not overextending and basically letting best feed into him, only then to dominate both a third base and a fourth base. And from there, there was just nothing else best could do. Yeah, yeah, that was uh, very, very well done. And I, I love some of the tactics that we had in that mid game. You know, I think, I think. Uh, is some of the vulture harass from mind as well when best was trying to get ready to bust him was just absolutely crucial best might have controlled the whole game if something like that hadn't occurred taking a quick look back um i don't think this is what lost the game i think the game may have already been lost from here um but this is where we saw best in a do or die moment try to come in it could be hard to tell how much the terran actually has your screen can only go so far out and you never know if there's more tanks where you just don't have vision but this was just not enough the storms were actually pretty decent but the tank spread was so wide it's crazy he just needed a bit more to really break through there but yeah if he had broken that maybe the game can go towards best you know as he keeps 12 alive and has reduced the seed chain count but a beautiful push. Uh, 
I, I mean, if that game is going to be descriptive of the series, it's going to be a long one and a really good one. Yeah, I think we've got a lot of great games ahead. Right now, mine with a 1-0 lead, but this is a best of seven, and we're just getting started. Vermeer up next. We will be right back. <웃음> <웃음> 너무 잘 그리는데 저는 진짜 리버보다 훨씬 많보다. 어 어떡할까? 꾸미기 제일 어려 제일 어려운 거다. 사인으로 하, 하나 떼워야겠다. 사인을 이렇게 다 해야겠다. 이렇게 이렇게 해야겠다. 저는 진짜 미술에 재능이 없어서. 사인으로 떼우고 이제 앞만 하면 되는데 뱀이고 말이니까 어떻게 그려야 될지 지금 감을 못 잡겠는데 뱀을 이렇게 해가지고 하면 되나? 머리를 어떻게 이렇게 해서 어? 뱀 같다 어? 잘 그리지 않습니다 일단 가수를 하나 가수를 하나 씌우고 이게 다한 개다. 내 아이디를 또 써야겠네요. 양쪽으로. 쓰고 여기 이제 마린을. 머리. 아 큰일이 나와. 머리 보면 다른 걸못 그리는데. 일단 눈. 목. 팔. 몸통. 다리. 그리고 이제 총. 자, 마린을 그렸습니다. 네. 하나 더요? 이게 저예요. 저를 표현한 거예요. 자, 아이디어 주시지 않으면 못 그립니다. 이런 식으로 나오시는 거저못 그립니다. 어, 뮤탈을 그럼 여기 뮤탈 잡는 느낌으로 토지를 그려야겠다. 뮤탈을 못 그리겠으니까. 어, 오버로드 괜찮네요. 어, 저 그런 아이디어를 원했어요. 이거는 그냥 오버로드는 이렇게 하면 아, 오버로드니까. 그러니까 오버로드는 그리기 쉽잖아요. 마인드랑 뱀과 이제 마린 스커즈랑 오버로드 있고요 그리고 여기 뒤에는 제 사인으로 떼웠습니다 깔끔하죠? 오히려 또 저는 깔끔한 걸 좋아해서 어, 일단 유니폼 받으실 팬분 정말 복 받으신 겁니다 축하드리고 제가 이 정도 퀄리티를 그릴 수가 없거든요 원래 오늘 되게 컨디션 좋은 거예요 잘 보관해 주셨으면 좋겠습니다 
이거 받으시는데 진짜 장난하는 게 아니고 너무 기분이 좋아요 제 기분 좋은 걸다 담은 거기 때문에 오래오래 잘 간직해 주셨으면 좋겠고 평생 못 잊을 것 같아요 그래서 이런 그딱 보관해 주시면은 인연이 단단 만나게 됐을 때 한번 제가 다 사드릴게요 이거 꼭 갖고 계시면은 꼭잘 간직해 주시기 바랍니다Bottom left, we have best. 
And in the top right, we have mine. So, yeah, Vermeer is kind of like the best four-player map, the best standard map that we have. It happens to be cross-spawn here. So if we do see a Nexus first, this is the best-case scenario for it. And honestly, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if he did go Nexus first. I do think that was a very specific map um, on Heartbreak Ridge to punish Nexus first because of that depot in there. And it's so funny, by the way, we've talked about weird rushes on that map, and we were pretty much right about them never happening anymore until we had that game. <laughs> and I guess, you know, back when that map was uh, new and fresh, that was at a time when people did not know about the Nexus first opening. So we didn't really get to cast games that, that could end up quite like that. Yeah, that's actually kind of a good point. The uh, I mean, Nexus first started to appear maybe, I don't know, 2006, 2007. And, uh, but it wasn't, it's really been perfected at this point, right? Like to the point where it's a huge percentage of games at higher levels. Uh, no, but I that's mean, I, not, I, gonna, not gonna go no, for that, just, just say, going for like, a gateway. I remember going Nexus first against people way back in the day and people wouldn't want to practice with me because it wasn't a real build. And, I mean, at the time, I'm like, well, I don't know. I mean, maybe I can get away with this, but, um, yeah. yeah, you're right. I mean, what, what we're looking at now compared to the old uh, ideas that were at play it is very different. Yeah, when it first popped up, it was it thought to be a troll build. Like, the first time I played against it, it was White Raw doing it, and I actually cussed him out, and I was like, you, you shit. Like, what are you doing? This is such a joke. <laughs> like... <laughs> So, yeah, it was it was not met. It, it just looks so stupid. It's like, of course you can't do that. And nowadays it's like, oh, of course you can. Oh, did they break the Nexus? It's okay. You're fine. <laughs> yeah, it, it's funny how it works out like that. But um, this time around, Best is going for the bread and butter standard PVT opener. Gateway, gas, core. Uh, and there's so many different branches this build can go on from here. So you never know what kind of game you're going to get by looking at what the Protoss is doing at the start at this moment. And as far as Terran goes, I mean, you always know what you're going to get. It's going to be a factory expansion, you know, uh, and that's it. <laughs> it's it, Will you make the Vulture first? That's kind of a question. And how does he want to follow it up? Does he want to follow it up with a Starport, an Armory, or a second factory? It's, you know, it's always got to be one of those, so... Uh, that'll kind of dictate the way that mine needs to play it going forward. Um, and the most normal route for best would be to get a Nexus after the first Dragoon. Sometimes you can even do it before the first Dragoon. There's a couple different variations depending on the distance here. It looks like this is going to be a little bit earlier. Um, since he does see he's in cross spawns, the Protoss decides like, well, I could probably cut some corners. Yeah. So let's go ahead and squeeze that out now. It's very true. Like, if this is close spawn and they make the Nexus with no Zealot, you know, before range, you actually, you have some options as Terran. Like, you could send some SCVs, Marines, and Vulture and, and try to mess with it. Uh, I don't think he'll try it here because it is, it, like, it's a funny thing that I think that um, people that don't play as much can't quite understand where it's like, wait, is it really that big a difference when it's cross spawn as opposed to, you know, vertical horizontal spawn? And the answer is a resounding yes. You know, those... That extra, like, six, seven seconds to travel across the map makes or breaks rushes. Yeah, StarCraft 1, they really seem to perfect the speed at which units move. Um, where, like, you know, I, I've seen Koreans describe it online, which I, I, now is the way I like to describe it as, it's actually a slow game, but you can micro things very, very well. And so having these micro changes in the distance on a map, it does change the rush distance, and it does allow you to actually, um, you know, recalibrate your build order to maybe get uh, a little bit more greedy or be a, or defend a little bit more. Um, and by the way, this is going to be a hidden starport. I was wondering when somebody was going to do something like this, whether it was a hidden robo or a hidden starport. But you know, when you see a player in cross spawns like this. Uh, and, you know, he already knows that there's corners being cut because of the quick nexus. It can set up very nicely for a vulture drop. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, it, when you've gone for uh, such a quick nexus, you know, you have uh, your range upgrade a little bit slower because of that. And, of course, the travel distance is long for Protoss as well. So it's a really good situation to try that vulture drop. Uh, the direction that the, the dropship's going to come in doesn't end up in the main. It ends up in the natural. 
So that, you know, it, it's, it's a little bit more tricky to pull off the Vulture Rush because of that, but a little bit more unexpected as well. Well, you know, a little insight here from the Protoss' perspective, if they do this type of opening, usually that's where there are not Dragoons is actually in the natural. A lot of times you'll have one Dragoon plug up the entrance once you mm -hmm. get your second pylon where these guys are, and then you'll put a lot more in the main if you're not sure uh, of a drop. So sometimes dropping it in there can be the way to do it. We'll see exactly where it goes. This is also a Reaver coming out. Uh, keep in mind that a, a Reaver is, is, I guess, neither good nor bad versus a Vulture drop. I mean, the, the Vultures can't really stay where, they're, where they want to be. Uh, against the Reaver, but they can also just avoid the Reaver entirely. Yeah, yeah, and is sometimes, depending on timing, the Reaver can actually be, like, on its way if it's a slightly slower Vulture drop. Here, he is going to get the drop off before the Reaver has left the base, so we'll see if Best uses it defensively or tries to go across the map. Now, here comes that Vulture drop dropping off into the Natural, and he decides to drop every Vulture here to the Natural and actually getting a very good amount of probes so far. Yeah, this is already, like, so many worker kills. Um, what was that, like, seven worker kills, something like that? Something like that, yeah. Yeah, that it was, was that was, was good. pretty good. Like, yeah, you lose four vultures there, but you know what? You have a lot of mines around. There is a secondary drop coming up. Probably not expected to do quite as much, but he got a good amount of probes. Yeah, I mean, I, I would say Terran is substantially uh, ahead. You know, when you consider the fact that he got the base up, he's actually going to drop again. Um, this may be a... Well, you know, I guess if you can get a few more workers, why not? So he comes through there once more. Um, and, you know, this this hurts as the Protoss. He did know that there's a lot of times that soft spot there at the natural. Because you always have one or two Dragoons in your main if you think a drop's going to come. Because otherwise you just lose the game. They all come in there, they drop, they kill off so many workers. Um... So Mind, I think he played a, a very smart opening here, exploiting the fact that Best was just slightly greedier and knowing that, you know, okay, you're going to have probably one less Dragoon. Four can't really cover two bases uh, against a four Vulture drop. So he gets in there, he does that damage, and he pulls right back out. Now there's uh, Dragoons coming across the map with a speed shuttle. I don't think he could Bulldog, but, you know, no. sometimes Best just crashes into areas. <laughs> and I'm, I couldn't be more shocked. I don't know if he has Siege Mode yet, either. Hold on a second. Oh, I don't you think this is a very good plan here. Uh, he does drop on top of that tank. The Reaver gets out, and he's got to be careful not to lose that tank. He does pull the tank back, and he just he has enough, I think. Oh, that tank of the natural gets sniped. Now, will he actually save this tank? Oh, my oh God. God. Oh, my God. He's <laughs> going to keep oh, it alive. Oh, That's two health insane. left over. <laughs> kind of crazy. I can't believe Best did as well as he did with this. He's still going to lose everything. I still... <laughs> honestly, I still don't think that was a very good idea from Best, but I guess it kind of worked out, didn't it? <laughs> well, you know, sometimes they might not have Siege Mode. You know, what was scary about that, by the way, was the barracks could have been landed to actually fully plug up the entrance, which would have been disastrous. See the depot turret egg? line the barracks can land there and actually seal that off but he didn't do it uh so the mm -hmm. dragoons actually got to run in and, and, and take the fight maybe the scv was underneath it blocking it but that's kind of crazy uh and yeah i mean artos is we've talked about this though with best he just is okay uh dive bombing into these positions that nobody else will yeah yeah he's he's very confident in his his protoss first terran and his macro and his execution of attacks uh, that one, again, it, I think it did better than I thought it would going in. Like, when you have that many turrets, tanks, wraiths, you're not fully sieged. That's one of the important things. One of the big changes in understanding is you just don't siege all your tanks. Like, they're actually better defensively unsieged. Uh, so, uh, I mean, a good attack from best, I guess, overall. And another drop comes out from mine. Not really that great a drop, honestly. He gets a couple probes. You know, eventually you're hitting diminishing returns, but there you go. Does a little run into the third base, gets about three more probes there. He's spending a lot of vultures here trying to do damage, which you have to be careful about that. Like, it, it's great to get some probe damage done, but uh, if you lose too many vultures, you're not going to be able to, like, take your third base. You're not going to be able to hold big attacks at best does, etc. That was a cool move that he sent the probes out early. He saw the vultures leaving. 
to the uh, observer yeah. and then just realize like, oh, I actually just have to hide this now. You can see the observer following it a little bit <gasps> unsure of what's going on. Oh no. This is just too many vultures that you're allowing in here. Yeah. Um, I mean, yeah, he's killing vultures in the process. I, I would be very curious what the actual probe count is at this point in time. We really haven't seen that many workers um, uh, die from Terran, if at all. Yeah, no, he maybe he lost a couple of SCVs when he was blocking the goons, but that's not a big deal. Uh, certainly the worker count is better for Mind right now. His third command center, not quite done. And again, he has spent a lot of vultures. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I, I think it, as a Terran here, you're definitely happy with how the game is going. You've you've blocked the counterattack. There hasn't been significant harassment. The SCV count certainly healthy for Mind. I assume he's hitting his upgrades. We haven't really seen that. But, you know, if you're a pro Terran in the round of four, you're definitely going to be hitting those. So it, the game is growing pretty well for him, and he's really delayed best out, which is what you want. You just you don't want best already on, like, five base here. Now, if best can actually win this after what I would say is maybe, like, three to four major blunders. Um, well, I guess they're not all blunders, but, you know, I mean, taking serious damage, getting outmaneuvered, I would... Kind of go back to what you were saying, Artosis, the decision to kamikaze the shuttle in there with the Dragoons didn't really pay out, especially when that tank got to live. If Best can win this, I'm going to be blown away. I do feel like he's the kind of Protoss that does seem to be able to get beat up a bunch and still sort of make his way uh, out of the game with probes and, and just keep producing and keep upgrading and keep looking for opportunities. Um, so let's see if that's going to be this game. But when Terran takes a third and the Protoss has not even finish the fourth and there's been this many workers killed it's not good for the products no no certainly not and you know it, it seems to me like mind has enough of everything you can see how close the supplies are that's like this is what you want as Terran if you can just keep your supply kind of close to Protoss they aren't going to be able to break you like all you need to do is you need to make sure you're spread up you have some turrets and everything lay a few mines and it's just like this if best attacks in here, he's gonna. It's it's gonna be a loss. Like you can't do this. Yeah, no. I mean, I, I don't think there's any way. Well, <laughs> okay. he can't help he's himself, go. man. Yeah, man. I mean, it's like one of these moments. I'm like, well, yeah, I agree. Uh, yeah. And then I just, you know, he he comes in like that. Now, again, best is the guy that does seem to be able to break into most bases that nobody else can, but. I'm a little bit stunned to see that it was just Zealots in Shuttles and Dragoons uh, with a Reaver, yeah. of course. But, you know, normally you want to have at least some Zealots on the ground to kind of come in and, and charge through. And because he's lost all that, now these Vultures can once again freely move on the map. These are plus two attack, plus one armor Vultures. Uh, Terran has managed to get that oh-so-critical upgrade combo um, in, in what's been a pretty active game with Protoss constantly on the defense. Well, let me say this. Like, he's diving in for some probe kills. Honestly, I think this is a little bit of a mistake. Uh, I think if you just lay a few mines around the map with these and run them home, that is the best case scenario. Because the amount of units Best has wasted here and the amount of factories that, that Mind has, I think if he literally just does a couple rounds and moves out, I can't imagine Best holding that. Like, look at the factory count. It's super, super healthy. He's got like seven, eight factories right now. He's got a very good siege tank count. Yeah, and it looks like he is starting to move out. I think he's on siege. He's coming across the map with his entire army. And if he just rallies Vulture into this, the you know, he's going to easily kill this fourth base. And then what do you do is best? Like, you, I think you have to try a counterattack. And then if mine blocks that, we are very close to the end. Yeah, counterattack may actually be the best route. I think Protoss was just a little bit late, but never count best out for engaging in a, in a moment that I think no other Protoss player would. He's going to be in range of that base. I don't know what's actually at the Terran's third either. Um, oh, there's, like, there's like almost like, nothing there, I think. It's it's very, very sparse. But, like, best is just sitting there. He's not making a, a strong decision, and he really needs to. He needs to do something. Okay, he's moving in over here. He's going to unload some Zealots just out of the side where these tanks are. The Zealots over here for best are going to rush in. And Artosis, he might actually just have enough. This is crazy to me. 
Yeah, I, I think I don't I understand think... how he does this. <laughs> it's pretty amazing after the amount of units he's lost that he's been able to macro up into this position. I do think that mine should have been making only vultures and just reinforcing immediately because this was like a game deciding moment. Uh, but it looks like he has enough units coming down that he still should be able to kill this fourth base. I think you're probably right. It's There's just not enough Dragoons in here right now as well. You need some Dragoons doing damage. Um, you know, and otherwise the Terran can basically just not siege up and kind of micro around. But let's see where these... Oh, no, the mines don't get pulled in there either. Does yeah, he have a Reaver can, here? Dude, mine just keeps pushing into these Zealots. It, like, Zealots alone are really terrible. Uh, you can just... You can outdo them in so many ways. You just don't siege. And, and it becomes yeah. pretty bad for Protoss. He's got to remake those Dragoons. But you know what? As the Vultures die... He backs up. Like, you, you can't do it with just that little group of siege tanks. And mine's siege tank production has been very, very good. But, again, I feel like this is a game where a, a mass rally of vultures could have made a big difference. Uh, but mine building more towards that late game. He does have a supply advantage. He's getting his fourth up uh, at the same time that the fifth base is going up for best. So, mine is certainly winning this game. Like, he is, he is certainly ahead. But best, maybe with some opportunities to come back now. Yeah. Um, you know, it's almost incredible to me that he actually held that. But now it's probably too far of a position to try to push into. Mind probably not feeling that confident about trying to come in at this moment. We do have SCVs transferred here to 12 and probes transferred to 6. So it's a 4 base versus 4 base. That's not great for Protoss. Um, the real story is going to be in the supplies. I think now Mind might just have enough. He's got plus three attack, plus two armor. I don't even know the upgrades for best. Uh, I don't know if we're going to click on one unit and see, but I mean, that that's really where the Protoss units are considerably worse. I know he doesn't even have an armor upgrade for anything. The only thing that could save him right now would be really good size storm. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's really going to be key here. That seed chain count is absolutely unbelievable. That is what has kind of delayed him from maybe killing this base, but now that he's got it, it looks so scary. Mine's just about maxed out now. Uh, he has enough anti-air there, and here comes the counterattack. This is what Best needs to do while losing a base, is come in here and fight. He is going to get into the third base. There's only one tank siege currently, another one coming up. Yeah, those depots are really doing some incredible work right there. He's going to come in and storm a lot of these SCVs. Many of them are going to be deep in the red. Um, and maybe he can kill the command center. I don't know. But Terran's also going to keep pushing right down into the um, location where all the gateways are. And if Terran can siege up out there, then you're stuck. You can't get out of your base. You can fork off a few tanks here and there uh, and start to dish out damage on the remaining expansions. It was definitely a good counterattack, but yeah, this main attack from Mind is stronger. He's going to kill the third base after killing that fourth. He's laid the mines in front of the natural. Might be able to even ravage all the probes at that fifth base location. A little bit unsure about that. He is running around with the vultures a little bit. Uh, but you know what? If he gets this army out or trades it well, another big advantage for him. So Protoss can try to wiggle out. You know, Terra didn't go for the full contain. They kind of placed mines here. I don't know if this is going to be a big issue or not. I mean, I, I think the supplies alone, you should be okay. But again, with a good size storm and in fact, the best plane, I'm, I'm a little wary to, to, to fully commit to any, any one uh, obvious winner here. But the fact that Protoss could come out, maybe he could have done another counterattack. No, doesn't matter. GG. There's just too many tanks sieged up. Plus three attack, plus two armor is pretty good. That was really fantastically done for mine. Very, very solid macro. A great situation for him to choose to hide that starport and, and get the drop off to deal some pretty big economic damage to best early on. Uh, you know, I, I think um, for me personally, like I didn't love the dive in with the Reaver at the beginning. And also the attack into the third base where we're literally sitting there saying, if he attacks in here, this is a big loss, right? Though that yeah. attack was probably the worst of the game of the series so far. So I feel like best, you know, these things he's been doing to the other Terrans, you're in the round of four. You can't be doing that anymore. You have to be more careful with your attacks. 
Got to point out that mine got an, a, an advantage at the start of both games, and Best played like he had an advantage in the mid game, which might have been what cost him. He was still kind of intent on doing the strategy he wanted to do, despite the damage he took early on, which um, it's interesting to see that pattern develop in just our first two games. Um, I think if Best is going to start to recover here, it's going to have to be on the back of very clean openings that are maybe a little bit more conservative than what he's already doing. Nexus first in game one, and then Nexus before first Ragoon uh, in game two. Um, if he pumps the brakes and, and maybe covers his bases a little bit more, uh, we could see a better game. But, oh, 76, I almost forgot, for map three. All right, guys, we'll be right back with a weird game. Welcome back, everybody. We've had two pretty incredible games where mine has come out on top versus best. He's actually halfway there to getting to the finals. He just has to win two more. We talked about how best did get tripped up a little bit in the early game and kind of acted like he was actually ahead anyways and kind of overextended. <laughs> yeah. But now yeah. we go on to a very different map. Um, on at 76, a map that I expect is going to be long, dramatic, and no doubt different from the first two games we've already seen. Yeah, and this is one of Best's early picks. Uh, we've certainly seen some strong games out of him on the map. Like, wasn't that him that beat Light, where Light was playing like this masterful wraith based game? Uh, kind of crazy. So, yeah, I don't know what to expect on 76. The map is still an enigma. <laughs> Yeah, you know, I don't know how how much we can conclude on this map <laughs> but, uh, it, before we eventually retire it. No doubt this is going to be um, not around for an extremely long time. I don't, who knows? Maybe we'll have it next season. But uh, it's been interesting to kind of see the uh, things develop um, uh, on this, I especially in that um, you know, we can have some very, very different games as far as opening goes. Like, Karen, have, especially Light, has experimented with Wraiths. I don't know if mine is going to have his own approach. Mm. Um, we could end up with mass carriers. I don't know. There's so much to talk yeah. about. I almost want to just get to this game so we can kind of unpack it. I know. Yeah, it's 76. Like, I don't think there can be a completely developed meta until we have this map out for a long time. But normally, this type of map only lasts one season. So this, this could yeah. be the last time that we really see it especially for this matchup um yeah so let's get into this man best versus mind i hope for best sake he can start to win we rarely see people recover in a best of seven if they're down oh three it's a statistical rarity uh obviously anything's possible but best really needs to start stepping it up he has been overextending he's overextending excuse me he's been a bit headstrong uh, and it mm -hmm. does seem like no matter what Best does, Mind is somehow able to open up in a way that can give him the upper hand. Yeah, he, he really has. That That's actually, you're right, that's what happened in both of the first two games is he actually got an advantage right at the beginning. Uh, and, you know, obviously at the pro level, you get something like that, it's hard for your opponent to come back, especially with Best style where he's used to being ahead, <laughs> you know, and just yeah. forcing his will upon you. But I think he can do a bit better here on 76. I think that this is going to be a long, long game as well. I'm sure Mind has some smart plans 
Uh, all right, I'm ready, Tasteless. Let's get into it. Like, wait, I'm not ready. No! <laughs> uh, no, don't start it! No, stop! Don't start the game yet! No, no! It's like the, it's the middle of the night over here. We're recording this. I think I just realized my balcony windows been open. The whole night. It's just been hearing me scream for like, <laughs> for like an hour and forty minutes. I think I just heard my girlfriend shut it. But it's like, all right, well, amazing. Now the whole neighborhood knows there's an insane guy who kills in English here. Yeah. Um, all right. Whoops. Okay. So um, we've got best down here in the bottom right. We've got mine in the top right. I know that some of you tune in to just the later parts of the tournament. So. Yes, those are real minerals right next to the Nexus in the command center. Well, <laughs> um, well I, but they uh, go away very quickly. Um, yeah, they're, and, they're, and they're technically hallucinated, so they last for 56 seconds. Yeah. And uh, you're going to see Bess. He's going to shoot down here. There's some right there as well, and you have to send a probe right away uh, to get down to take this expansion if you want to take it very quickly. Now, I have a quick question. If it's a hallucinated mineral, if Terran accidentally lifts off his command center, can yeah. you not land it again there? That's right. Until oh, it disappears. God. Until it disappears. Oh, that's brutal. Yeah. Well, I mean, <laughs> I don't think anyone has ever lifted off their command center at the beginning of the game. The only time it actually accidentally gets lifted is when you're making comp sets. Yeah. That is the only, yeah. That is the only time. You can click really quickly, and if the game is lagging at all, you can... Sometimes it lifts off, and you're like, oh, man. <laughs> so we have Best going for Nexus first. Now, um, let's let's keep unpacking this map, because it's not just the, the weird hallucinated minerals that you spawn next to. Um, you basically are given a, an island that is isolated from your starting island on this map, but only if you take it right away. Um, and then also in your main island, you do have a ramp that leads out, but it's a very small ramp that only certain units can fit down, like we see right there. Yeah, and just to put it into perspective, the biggest unit that can go up and down there is the Hydralisk. Uh, Zots can make it, workers can make it, Marines and medics can make it, vultures cannot make it. So uh, if you want to go for something like mech here, you have to use mass dropship. Right, uh, and obviously, like much of the map is like air-based. Um, you know, Protoss has a little bit easier time with Zealot, High Templar, like running around the map and maybe taking the other main bases. Uh, for Terran, that's all going to be more dropship focused. So, yeah, it, there, there's like a lot, a lot, a lot to this map. Uh, very hard to figure out exactly what the best thing is going to be. From the games I've seen from Mind on this map, TVP, he does prefer a more mech-oriented approach as opposed to a wraith-oriented approach that we saw from Light. Uh, and from Mind, it, it involves a lot of dropships. I don't know if he's going to do that this time, but that's what I've seen from him. Yeah, well, let's see. The factory's done. I feel like we're going to see the double wraith. One. Starport coming in here. Oh, hold on. Maybe there's not going to be another one made. Um, I think maybe he's going to make a command center. Yeah, yeah. So maybe like a single wraith just for anti shuttle or something into dropship. And he is going to make this quick vulture, which I've seen from a lot of Terran players more recently. Oh, a ooh, second ooh, factory? Ooh. Very cool. Oh. oh, I wasn't ready for that. No. Interesting. No. And, you know, to be honest, these are very unfortunate spawns. For, for best when you consider he doesn't yeah. know where his opponent is when he goes Nexus first. This is so close, it's basically like a two factory proxy star. <gasps> oh my god, he sees both. That's that was so that was big. so smart from Best when he saw it. the thing is mine didn't micro. He stood. And that was the giveaway there for Best. It's like, wait, why aren't you pulling back and like microing heavily? Because he could have saved some of the health on his Marines, but the only reason yeah. to stand still is to bait your opponent into absolutely not checking oh, out oh. what you have building there. So he's gonna that try to glitch is a it up. big moment. Yeah, Artosis, I'm sorry to try to run over you. I think he's going to try to glitch us up. You can stop <gasps> this SCB. And it's it's one of the harder things to do to ever glitch anything up a ramp. I've, uh, I've never possible. seen anything glitched like this. Well, he clearly has practiced it or we wouldn't be here. But it's not going to work. 
Yeah, not gonna work this <laughs> time. Artosis, remember like a million years ago when I had a game against you and I tried to glitch my probe over your wallet and I failed four times yeah. by canceling the pylon and I just left the game? <laughs> <laughs> I do remember you trying to glitch so many yeah. times and it just absolutely not working. I'm like, oh, tasteless. <laughs> there he goes again. Um, so, you know, Taryn has his push and, you know, we said it earlier, but it's worth reiterating here. He can't get up the ramp. Not with the Vulture, not with the tank, but a dropship can help him do that. Meanwhile, Bess is rapidly tanking up towards a Reaver. I actually think the cannon placement, by the way, at Bess Natural covers all the land on the Does top it? side of it the might. island. I think it's actually perfect. You might be so right about that. You can't, like, drop one tank and siege up just like a hex out of mm -hmm. range. But, man, I mean, this is a lot that's going to be pushing up over here. The thing is, one vulture might be able to take this all on. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know that this can work. Like, look at this. He's got three Dragoons. Okay, he doesn't target uh, the dropship at all. Just kind of microing back. And, you know, picks up the tanks as well now. The, the vultures are already up there. The Marines and SCVs can traverse the tiny ramp. And mine continuing to push forward. Uh, there are some defensive cannons here, and the Reaver should be out pretty soon. But does mine have siege mode? Imagine yeah. putting Siege Mode down right now. Yeah, I mean, I, I feel like he should be getting Siege Mode. That bunker is just not quite placed where it needs to be. And I feel like, actually, yeah, you can just take everything for as best and just throw it at this, and it's not going to last, especially yeah. not with the Reaver out. I mean, this actually could already be over, our Artoth. Right. <laughs> GG! <laughs> it's okay. over before I could finish my sentence. Yeah, that's going to be it. I'm going to give uh, a hot take right now, Tasteless. Yeah. I think, actually, this was maybe the smartest build that mine has done so far. And here's why. Okay? Because, first off, I never thought that that was going to work. I bet you you didn't think that was going to work. Like, that. It, I mean, having to ferry a two-factory. Two factories themselves barely ever work right now at the pro level. Uh, but I think that that was smart because this map is so far away from every other map. He wasted no practice time on 76. So he, like, by just being like, yeah, I'm just going to do a cheesy all in there. We'll see. Like, he gives up the map, but 76 is so different, it could suck up a huge amount of your practice time for a tournament. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, I, I, I like the build. I do. It's too bad it got spotted. Um, I personally was not expecting something as, as kind of... I guess an older style of thinking about the map is just sort of a two-base push mm -hmm. uh, up onto the high ground. You know, if you can really punish players uh, with that, especially if they're isolated from their expansions. But, um, I mean, the scout really saved the day. Not that Best wouldn't have gone for Reaver Tech there, but I think when you know that the two factory is coming, it's so much easier from the Protoss' perspective to hold it. And if you're trying to figure out what's going on before suddenly, you know, there's two tanks and a bunch of vultures right at your base. Uh, and that's going to be best first win. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, well, at least he's got his uh, name on the board there, Tasteless. Uh, I was a little bit nervous. Like, if that, let's say that rush works for mine. I'm like, well, that sucks. This is supposed to be a great series. <laughs> but uh, now that he has a map win, we're going to go into Sylphid, where, you know, that's, I think Sylphid's a pretty even map for the matchup. Uh, best might be able to put on some early pressure there. And I'm hoping he can tie up this series uh, because Mind has been playing fantastically on these more standard maps. It's going to all come down to, I think, the opening from Best. Does Mind get the upper hand like he has in almost every single game? If Best can maybe play 15%, 20% more conservatively and maybe not try to cut corners so much, then maybe Best and Mind are playing more of an even game where maybe the aggression that Best has used to succeed in the past can actually work for him. Um, but overall, I do feel like Mind has come in here with better prepared openings and responses to his opponent's openings. Yeah, he definitely had uh, great openers, right? Like, I think game two really kind of highlights uh, what what Mind is bringing to the table here today. Uh, as far as the next map coming up, like Sylphid, uh, I, I, there's a big range that can be used here, okay? There's definitely a lot of pressure builds from Protoss as well, since there's no ramp and the map is a little bit smaller, you can put that pressure on very early, so that might be something that Best wants to consider. Sure. Uh, or Best might be trying to go for Nexus first again, or um, 
maybe just doing something very standard. I do feel like Sylphid really does kind of allow for every kind of play. I think that's mm-hmm. one of the things that makes it such a good map. Uh, and even when you get to the late game, you know, um, Arbiter recalls or mass shuttle um, unloads into the main can be good. There's positions where carriers can be strong. Terran can go for drop early. Um, or Terran could try to power up on three bases or even turtle it out onto, onto four. Um, so there's just there's so many different ways a game like yeah. this could go. It's very hard to call. It really is. It really is. Uh, and at best has to consider heavily what opener mind may want to use. Uh, because one thing I want to mention, you know, like a, a gasless expansion where you're going uh, before you get that gas uh, for the quick command center. That's, I think, one of the best builds on Sylphid. Uh, and that's that's pretty well known. So there is a possibility that Best may want to do something pretty cheesy, like even a center gateway might be something he wants to consider. I would say at least a forward gateway in his natural. Yeah, you know, forward gate has been very popular. Bisu's still wearing that forward gate like it's uh, like it's <laughs> never been out of style. Um, yeah, forward gate is totally fine. I, gateway in the center, that could be interesting as well, Artosis. Um, to see how exactly that would, would, would pan out. Uh, we haven't really had Best do anything cheesy at all. He seems to be much more hungry to get into mid-game and into late-game and basically <laughs> you know, win by clobbering the Terran at his expansions. Um, but I got to say, overall, you know, Mind has really been impressing me. I was kind of in denial that Mind was actually going to get as far uh, as, as he was, like every step of the way, I was kind of like, wow, well, good for him. I guess he is yeah. kind of pulling it together. And then we're like almost at the finals, and it's like, oh, are you like the best Terran in ASL right now? Is that what's <laughs> happening? It could be. Sorry, I didn't realize that earlier. I should have. It's like every game I see from him, he looks so solid. And it's that kind of scary, a little bit like Flash, a little bit like Light, mm-hmm. uh, very clean around the, uh, the, the corners. You know, mm-hmm. it, everything's very precise. Um, he knows when to uh, push in. He knows when to stay uh, away. And he's playing a smart game. Yeah, he's he's really a finished Terran. And, you know, mm. he's it's like he knows how to walk down the hallway holding a book on his head or whatever, right? Like, he's he's gone to manor school with his Terran. And it's it's <laughs> it's a beautiful thing to behold. <laughs> he's gone uh, to etiquette school with his Terran. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Manor school. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we call Artosis, it. He goes to etiquette school. You go to manor school. Okay? <laughs> That's true. Yeah. Well, yeah. I need to go to manor school, but I keep skipping. <laughs> um, <laughs> it looks like we're going to go directly into set four. No commercial break here. Yeah. Silphid going to be our next map. Let's get ready to get into it. A very important map here for best. got best over here at 12 o'clock uh and then in the bottom right corner we have mind and the bottom left corner is going to be the vacant third uh, location that maybe uh best will be trying to, to to fight to get to maybe drag this out in the late game before we get into this match we just want to say again thank you so much for the love and support on patreon uh, patreon.com forward slash asl english we hope to earn your support because without support like yours, we would not be able to do uh, this production in this event and keep the history of StarCraft alive in English. That's right. <laughs> oh, yeah, like, the, oh, the, the, the showdown if we don't have the Patreon what, up. No, no, yeah, that's, <laughs> that's what truly matters, too, is keeping it alive in English specifically. Yes. Um, <laughs> uh, but, yeah, thank you very much, guys. And uh, it's it's been a, an amazing season. I'm sure that we have a lot of good games still left in it and the next season of course already looking forward to that as well uh, and the possible storylines maybe Flash comes back next season man that that would really throw things into a loop you know it, here's my best timeline tasteless is that mine takes it super seriously puts himself completely into Starcraft and it turns back into a battle between him and Flash for best Terran because, oh. you know, I've mentioned it a lot of times that that was the case. And, like, it was such an exciting moment to try to figure out, like, you know, Nada is basically done, guys. Like, who's the, who's going to be the god of Terran now? And I I was actually on Team Mind. <laughs> you know, like, I was, I was 
he's screaming his name from the rooftops that he would be the best Terran in the world. Obviously, it didn't turn out like that, but I would love to see that return, and I feel like we're watching it here. By the way, Best with a very interesting, um, more active opener. He went scout after Pylon in the hopes that Mind might be in the bottom left and he could do a gas deal. Ah. Um, and so, you know, it's a one out of two chance that you're going to get that off, right? Which would be a pretty easy game to play. It would be a moment where Best could basically just take control of the game right away and forced mine to play a reactive style, probably on a map he doesn't really prep for gas steel builds on. Um, but it does not work out because unfortunately best is, uh, or sorry, mind is in a spawn that best didn't scout first. Yeah. And so you, you do lose a little bit when you scout with a probe this early and can't really get much for it. It's a, it's very true, but if you do find them there, it's a, actually a huge advantage. Uh, and, you know, especially that, that base, the gas sticks way out towards the choke, so it's, like, super easy to steal as well. So, Best was looking for a little bit of luck, didn't get it. Not the end of the world for him, you know. Loses a little bit of mining time there, but gets a good scout, sees what Mind is up to. And Mind is playing, like, a very safe build here. This is like something that can be played against everything, right? Where he's just, he's making the Marines. He'll probably make a Vulture as well. The factory is nice and quick. Uh, so there's not like, you know, I was mentioning that maybe Best wants to do some sort of pressure build, but he didn't make a Zealot. He's just going directly into Dragoons. Like he could pressure with Dragoons, but none of this is particularly scary, especially considering what Mind is opened with. Now, this is really starting to look more like a game and I know this is going to sound a little bit dumb so don't roll your eyes when you hear this guys this is starting to look like a game that can be okay for best and I know that nothing's happened by the way <laughs> but he's he's not being really greedy he hasn't done anything that, that that's we would consider you know a little bit of a corner cutter move uh, he's keeping his dragoon back to make sure the SCV is guessing about the expansion the vulture is going to come out here now um, and go ahead I, I, the one thing I wanted to point out, this is a three depot opener for Mind, which uh, is absolutely playable, but it's just not as popular as two depot into command center. So it delays your command center a little bit, but it allows more consistent SCV production, and you get that fourth Marine with it. Uh, he hasn't made the bunker yet. Okay, there it is. You definitely do need to get a bunker with this opener, uh, even though you have that extra Marine. But I, I wonder what the meaning of this is i feel like we're gonna maybe see him pop out a siege tank while getting mines and do a little marine tank pressure i feel like that's what we're gonna see but i'm not entirely sure did the terran confirm the nexus ever no i don't believe he's seen the nexus like the scv was dancing around there but the dragoon was was uh pretty good at holding it back so so the, I, the Protoss like almost always it. gets the Nexus, but just not having that confirmed can make you a little bit worried. It might be like, a, you know, a proxy DT or like maybe even like a really quick Shuttle Reaver. Um, in this case, it's not. The push is coming. SCVs are being transferred as well. I don't think this can do that much to best, though. Yeah, probably not. This is like a he's checking what's going on with this. Four Marines in a tank will like it, like this little army we see here would do like OK against it would kill two goons. Uh, with micro, but that's about it. Uh, with more vultures coming up, he, he is opening up the possibility uh, that if he suddenly hits and lays some good mines, like maybe maybe a little bit of damage could be done. So, nice little mine lays too. Like it, yeah. it seems like he's just getting that that scouting intel, that little bit of a containment. I guess he's not going to plan to push with the marines and tanks. Those are just kind of sitting there to catch any units that may try to walk out through the mines. Yeah, it's basically making a very light ring uh, around here, which he can just use to basically monitor if anything tries to leave. Now, this is two-gate Goon Observer. We don't see a third gate, so he's probably going to make a Nexus pretty soon here. And if you look at Mine's side, uh, he has a very, very quick armory that he got with this build, and just going into the engineering bay, an additional factory... This is like a very, you know, it, like I mentioned, the three deep openers aren't as popular, uh, but they're fine. Uh, but overall, this game looks like a ladder game, to be honest. Like, it's very, very straightforward macro builds on both sides. Like, a nice quick third base for best while he goes to gate observer and just kind of clears the mines. And, you know, here's mine just getting his upgrades, adding his factories. He'll 
Probably throw down a turret or two pretty soon here just to make sure he doesn't, you know, suddenly die to a reaver or something. But yeah, this is this is like probably the most standard we've seen so far. Yeah, this is definitely a game where if you want to know roughly what the matchup's supposed to look like, if nobody's crazy on either side, this is it. And this is what I was most eager to see Best play in because I want to see how Mind actually handles it. Because Best is very strong in these kinds of games. Best, a lot of times, it's like if he was a fighter, like it's just his fitness is very good. He's got good stamina. His strength is good. He's flexible. He kind of can do it all in a macro fight PVT. You know, it's very different from somebody like Mini who has a very weird out there build. He'll, he'll attack in weird directions. He'll mm -hmm. go Nexus first a bunch of times. He'll go two gate um, uh, on a four player map, just Zealot Rush and Cannon Rush. Like, he does weird stuff. Where Best is a lot more like, no, this is the PVT I've played for the last 25 years, and I know exactly yeah. <laughs> how I want to do it. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, this is this is like a modernized version of the same upgrade Terran, you know, that, that Terrans have played for a long time. Uh, very nice Vulture run by. Going to get three, four probes there. Uh, and so that's very, very nice for him. You can see his production looks very strong, like already has his three factories up. He's getting into that, uh, you know, those 2-1 upgrades pretty quickly. Best looks like he's sending a probe over to take a fourth base. And getting into Reaver. Now, I think he's going to go, like, speed shuttle and into, like, heavy gateways like we've seen Best do so many times. Yeah, I think so. Um, and there's going to be a fourth Nexus coming up here. You can always get that fourth Nexus out with four gates coming and a Reaver. There's not really a push that Terran can do that is safe uh, with this. And the, the, the Ring of Turrets is really good, by the way. You know, it, it's, it's just... Uh, it, it, it's not an overextension with turrets. He didn't waste any money, but he's got mines where you kind of can't drop anywhere. So, you know, both players have set up opportunities. Other than the, uh, the vultures engaging there, I don't think we're going to see much more in this game. Like, I don't think yeah. he can drop here. I think that turret kind of perfectly covers without having to make extra turrets this whole area. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's it's very well-placed buildings, and he even brings the goliaths up to, to stop that. Uh, the additional command center being made... Where he's making that command center, it looks like he wants to take that little pocket third, but completely honestly, I think you're supposed to take, in these spawns, the mineral base. That third base against best style, mm. like, best is going to shove a lot of units at that because it's so close to him. I could see, like, if you don't hold it, you're going to be done. And, yeah, that's I'm, I'm a little bit nervous about that for mine, but I, I definitely agree. There's not, like... A whole lot else that's going to happen. Oh, my God. A vulture uh, rotation here catches a bunch of probes. Yeah, you got to be really careful when you send the probes out to a fourth that's that far away because that's one of the great ways that a good Terran can come in and basically hammer your workers. And when that fourth base kicks in, that's really when you feel like you're killing it as Protoss. So to get in there, and I think that was like seven or eight probes killed. I mean, it was a lot. Uh, that really hurts. It does. It does. But I, I still feel like it's a better opener for best than we've had in a lot of these other games. So I think he's still fine. You know, eh, run into a few mines here and there. Like, there's some <laughs> sloppiness occurring. But it, that's the thing. Best is not known for, like, his precise play, right? <laughs> he's known for nailing his probes out, getting the gateways down, and having a hell of a lot of units to throw at you. So I'm seeing more and more zealots pool up over at the entrance of the second base for best. And this is reminding me a lot of game one. Obviously, we got here in a different way, but it's like the same idea. There's about 12 Dragoons, minus a couple that stepped on mines. Uh, there's a speed shuttle out, and there's a lot of Zealots that are going to have charge really soon. And there's also these three shuttles. So this is the mass shuttle play that's been growing in popularity. We may see a second Robo here. Oh my god, he's so good he puts a bunker there. Mm, I like that bunker. That's actually fallen yeah. out of favor uh, a lot lately, but uh, cool to see it here from mind. Now, here's this very choked up area. Oh, God. Best is going to dive into the main base now, flying over these missile turrets, dropping on top of the bunker and the siege tank. A Reaver comes out as well. Yeah, and I don't know that he can actually save the bunker, but if he does, like, well, I guess the Reaver can actually shoot the SUVs on the bunker, too. Um, the bunker is, like, the MVP here. Because... <laughs> it really is. 
I mean, that, that's just such an obvious solution now to this. I'm kind of surprised because I think he could see the bunker with the observer. Maybe I'm wrong. Mm -hmm. But now I feel like Best has tripped himself up again. It seems like Mind has done such good research on basically what behaviorally Best is going to do. And the truth is, Best does a lot of his moves so fast. I don't know how much time he puts into really uh, analyzing every placement of, of the mines and the tanks and, and gives it a second thought. I think it's why it's hard for a lot of Terrans to deal with, is he comes in faster than pretty much any of the Protoss. But he's basically running into a brick wall here versus mine. Yeah, that, that drop wasn't really that effective. It really wasn't. Like, uh, the bunker did do so well. The Reaver got blown up very, very quickly, so didn't get the damage he was looking for. But Bess is not done attacking. He's going to go ahead and bomb on top of these siege tanks. And here comes the rest of his army, but I don't think the Zealots are going to make it up, so you have to pull back. Bess just rabid. Honestly, I think if he had done this type of attack into the third base with those three shuttles there would have been some real opportunity uh, to bust it. But I think spending the three shuttles getting nothing done and then trying that attack on the third base, that's not a winning combination. Yeah, he seems a little bit nervous, actually. Uh, we've seen enough moments where in other games, you know, he has, like, perfect engages. And in this, it's just the total opposite, honestly. Um, we're a ways out from mind pushing, but not that far a ways out. There's going to be Psystorm. If it's not already been researched, um, it will be. Protoss is on five bases. I'm worried, though, just in general right now for for Bess. I feel like he's kind of thrown away a lot of units. Um, and that eventually Mind is going to come out with a good engage. But I guess with Storm, we really have to see how the Terran moves and, and where the Psystorms land. Yeah, that's it's such a good point because that's actually you win a lot of games with this speed shuttle size storm type of style during the Terran attack. Like a lot of times it might look like the Terran is dominating and then you get some good storms down. And suddenly it's like, oh, God, you know, the, now Protoss can kind of take the whole map because Terran's lost so many tanks here. So I think a lot of it will come down to that. Mind hasn't taken a fourth base yet. Don't forget that third base he took runs out very quickly. So when you take that. You either have to nail a timing or get more bases up. Yeah, that's a good point. Do we have a fourth command center made anywhere? I don't think we do. I don't think so. I think this is just straight up three. Oh, no, there is a fourth command center. Okay. So he's going to be able to kind of send that over there. Um, and it looks like Protoss is going to kind of hang down here onto the side of this base with the Dragoons, kind of monitoring this whole area. Um, and Protoss is going to max out. Protoss has a lot of minerals, a lot of gas. Uh, you know, I, I, Bess has had a hard start, but he is very, very much able to bounce back in these games. It's kind of crazy. Yeah, yeah. Well, you see how good his macro is. Like, he's got 2K in bank. He's maxed out. No issue. He's going into Arbiter from here as well. Uh, but he does have to be careful with incoming attacks. That's that's something that we've seen. Mind has been absorbing a lot of his attacks, and they haven't been doing it as well. But here, best comes. He is getting ready to try to bust something, I think. Yeah, he's going to try to take some kind of a fight and trade his supply out. He has a lot uh, in resources, but he decides to pull away. More Nexuses are coming down here. Looks like he wants to try to just kind of squeeze in where these mines are. If he goes too far out though, oh God, plus three attack, plus two uh, armor. This is pretty scary. I don't know if he can get down in here. Yeah, pretty fantastic just, upgrades. <laughs> I feel like Mind is just gonna win this tournament, man. He just looks like he's playing so much better than Best is, honestly. Yeah, he really does. He really does. Now here comes Best. Let's see if he gets a good engage, a good storm to start. EMP goes off on the shuttle, doesn't really do much there. He is going to hit this fourth base location. There's certainly not enough defense here, so this could get a bit messy. You know, it's really interesting. He's basically not overextending with his army. He's, he's just going to let the, the Terran kind of push into him and use Templars with Psystorm here to do as much damage as possible. And I got to say, man, I mean, it kind of worked. He actually forced that command center away. Um, and he's got more... Well, he almost has more Psystorms, I think, available here. <laughs> You know, I got to say, one thing that I'm really recognizing here is that best style of, like, 12 Dragoons into mass Zealots, Mind is just moving more slowly than other Terrans. He's really taking his yeah. time. 
And that means that, like, when he engages, it's on his terms, right? That If you're taking your bases a little bit quicker, Bess is just going to run in and kill you with the mass sell-off. But because mind, like, that's a very late third base considering, or fourth base considering, right? It was like a 15-minute uh, attempt, uh, where it, it, right now we see it a lot quicker a lot of the time. But I don't know. That's, it, it, it feels like he's just he's luring Best into doing what he wants Best to do. Yeah, I, I, it, it's a real, uh, it really exemplifies how good the micro is. That there's like a very specific technique that he's using to fight this. It can look misleading, but like the caution and, and the fact that he's not overextending into the storms is basically allowing him to keep all of his units alive. Now, Best is maxed out again. The th uh, fourth base has been dropped, um, driving the SCVs away again. Uh, this Nexus is going to fall, but that's not really the most important thing right now. There's going to be a big recall here. Um, I'm not sure. I guess these tanks that are going to spawn could come in here and save the day. He's going to come right in on top. This is a huge recall. Oh, man. He does get on top of that bunker. That one will finally fall this time. A lot of his units actually kind of trapped <laughs> in here. Uh, and Mind going to do a counterattack. He knows that his army on the map is much, much stronger at the moment. He's certainly right about that. Uh, the, the recall not honestly doing as much as he was hoping for. Yeah, he did kind of recall inside of this weird uh, hole that the bunker and the depots made. But, you know, Protoss hasn't been pushed in just yet. He's contained where the bulk of his gateways are. Another counterattack could wipe out 6 o'clock again. I mean, this isn't totally over yet. Yeah. Although we're, we're, we're beginning to see the outlines of a Protoss loss, for sure, with the contain followed up with the units fracturing off and hitting other locations. How well covered is the natural base here for Terran? I'm not sure how many units he has there. He certainly has a few in the main base and everything. Uh, but one thing to mention, like, that third base is going to be mining out soon, as is the yeah. natural. So... There is a world here where Best ends up winning just by running around and counterattacking some, because he is taking the left side of the map, which is incredibly important right now. Yeah, and he's got two Templars over there as well. Looks like these tanks want to siege up over here. Um, he sees the Arbiter. You've got to know that there's a possibility of a recall very soon. He's spread out the tanks very nicely. Everything is basically moving over to this spot here. He's dropping a Zealot here and there try to just soak up some shots from other siege tanks. Good defensive matrix from uh, mine. And what about this counter here? I mean, if he gets up here, the command center finishes, but he can't mine from there just yet. Yeah, it, the third base is mined out for mine. And okay. actually his natural is just about to go as well. So we're almost out of money for Terran. Even though he's destroying a lot that Best has, there's no way for him to really refill. You're going to see his money go down and not come back up. Like, yeah. look how how slow his minerals are coming. Okay, he relands this this fourth base location, and he definitely needs that mining. But like, oh as my god, Terran, oh my god, two bases. Oh no! Oof. That's it. That's he a can't re he can't recall that out. I guess the truth is that there's not a whole lot waiting outside of his base either. He could just <laughs> run out of here with his zealots. Dude, that's so funny to see. Like, he loves us so much. He there's so many zealots. of them there. <laughs> Oh my this is God. Ogre Zealot Gamer here, man. This <laughs> Ogre is wild. Zealot Gamer, 100%. That's exactly what Best is. This is just. He's the unreal. Ogre Zealot King, man. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, he can actually get out with all these units. I think he might be able to, to flatten this. I mean, there's so many Zealots, man. Yeah, if he could have recalled those like on that, that would have been devastating. Won. Yeah, yeah, I think the game would go to him. Because he'd kill all the tanks so quickly with a recall like that. But losing the energy on that Arbor, he was hiding in the top left. I mean, obviously, mine saw that go there before. So he just went up to check if it was still there. Uh, but yeah, look at this. Now getting in, and he's killing off probes at this base. This is the last mining base for best. They're both on one mining base. So there's still, like, some opportunity. By the way, almost enough energy for a recall on that Arbiter. So maybe there's one more chance for magic. Well, the thing is, too, is, I mean, his zealots are not trapped in here anymore. That's the other kind of funny thing about this game. He is roaming the map with, like, a massive maxed out or almost maxed out army. He is going to get to remake his nexus. 
Um, oh my gosh. Yeah, he did a really good job of basically re-rallying every gateway. I, I well, feel like I'm getting a real crash, crash course on how to just basically run the clock as Protoss in this matchup. Yeah. Mind, um, I mean, he has a lot, no doubt. Is that the only Arbiter, by the way? No, he has two Arbiters right now. One has recall energy. The other one is the one that got EMP that's like up at about 85 energy right now. Okay. So all the SCVs in the game should basically be down in this bottom location. Keep in mind, I don't think Protoss actually has that many probes. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Here we go. Oh, the stasis from behind onto the science vessels is pretty gigantic. Another stasis goes down. The drop of zealots on the tanks to the north is huge as well. More zealots rallying in right now. And you, you know are. what? He's going to clear these tanks. <laughs> All of his supplies and units, he has like no workers. <laughs> I can't even believe this. Oh, my God. Now, he has this to he has wild. to clear the rest of the tanks as they as they unstasis. This is the really important moment. Mind needs to bring every unit he has to try to save these. Um, yeah, he needs to try to come up here and basically siege up and cover these tanks. Uh, is there another stasis available to maybe entangle these ones way in the back? Oh, his zealots actually start to get on top of these tanks to the south. Uh, the stasises are wearing off, so the rest of the army is going to be able to fight here as well. He kills off a lot of these tanks down here, which that was really nice. But I think Best is dead now. I think that was his last real attempt at winning the game. I think he probably should have killed that and then ran back out and not waited for the units to unstasis. Yeah, maybe you're right. But if, can you win the game from there? Can you win well, if you I, just... You know, I, yeah. Oh, I mean, you know, the thing is, is that Terran had had the game so insanely won. It's just that Best somehow macroed and, and kind of kept stuff going for so long. Yeah. Um, and now there's actually three fresh bases. So, like, I feel like, you know, in some ways I'm more impressed with Best, even though I think he loses this just because mm. of uh, what he was able to pull off here. But I think mine basically did everything he needed to do, and then played a very, very patient, quiet game. Yeah. Um, I, I, in, I, think, in I think a big part of what's going wrong for Best in this game in particular, but also the series somewhat, it's too Zealot heavy. Like, you yeah. need more Dragoons. Uh, most people make more than the 10 to 12 Dragoons we've been seeing from Best. But he's relying so heavily on Zealots, and Mind can force really good engagements, because, you know, Zealots... They're good, but if your opponent engages them correctly, they don't have a lot to them. Yeah, exactly. Um, and I think, you know, Zealot, GG. Zealots are great when you want to break a position that Terran is trying to take. And that can include a push at you at a certain early part of the game. That can include a late third base. But that doesn't include turrets, mines, a bunker in the main, a tank. It doesn't include very well depoted and turreted up areas with just siege tanks and, and only dragoons and shuttles that we've, we've basically seen best try to do his trademark move and it's backfiring every time and it seems like what mind has realized is that he knows that, that either best is going to be greedy early and he needs to go in there and punish that and kill the plant in its crib or if Best doesn't play greedy, then mine needs to play the most conservative, sluggish, kind of slow, cautious game, and let mine, uh, I'm sorry, let uh, Best just trip over himself trying to get in there yeah. and do the damage that he, he won't be able to pull off. Yeah, yeah, this, this uh, heavy stuff, like if, if Best doesn't change his approach immediately, I think there's no way to stop mine, right? Uh, mine is yeah. on match point for the rest of the match. The thing is, Best, you can tell, like he's, there's certain aspects he's doing very well, but these Zealot heavy busts are not working. We're going to go to a quick commercial break. When we come back, game number five.
카운트다운을 시작합니다. 떴다. 제로 칼로리로 기분까지 가볍게. 밀키스 제로. 이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이
speed lots with charge or the zone leg <laughs> yeah. up your grade and then running in there and running over the Terran. It's like uh, it, it's, it's an old way to play and I think maybe best after having such an incredible breakout performance. He's kind of walking around naked this event. Like we all sort of know what, what his strategies are and it was just, you know, that straightforward for mine to prepare for it. It's, it's a really good point. And the thing is, it's very trendy to do things like Speed Reaver into Super Mass Gateway and just bust. And it just has to do with your opponent, uh, you know, maybe making an excess in those tanks like you mentioned or uh, expanding too quickly or attacking too quickly. Any of that, it smashes. But yeah, if you're just taking your time, his mind, like he's, he's really putting a big emphasis on his scouting as well. Uh, one thing I noticed that I didn't actually talk about during the game because it was like almost too fine a point. Uh, he went for at, like he went for the engineering bay, you know, but then he went for the academy while he was still on only two factories. So that's like an extremely fast academy, but that's the type of thing that's giving him the intel on what's occurring so that he can adjust the way he's playing. Yeah. Um, so in this game, we have the gas deal. Uh, now, if you guys are remembering to Protoss who did this earlier in the tournament and who's done it in the last couple seasons, Bisu loves this. It's the idea is that you take their gas, you apply pressure with Zealots, uh, and then you take a, a Nexus pretty quickly. And they don't really have any way to, to, to try to play ahead of you. We have seen games where people have SCV uh, Marine rushed, and it almost always seems to fail. And, you know, the truth is the Zealots are just, they're much beefier, tankier units than Marines. It's almost insane when you just see them without any upgrades yeah. uh, engaging with each other. Like, how many I don't, like how many hits does it take for a Marine to kill a Zealot? <laughs> Who knows? No one Nobody can knows. Even Flash doesn't know that. <laughs> he's, even he's not enough of a nerd to know that. Oh, my God. Um, but the point is it's a lot. So you can kind of control uh, what the Terran uh, is, is really able to do until they get that factory that's been delayed back up. But um, the Cybernetics core is going to finish here. Uh, as Terran's getting their factory. And I gotta say, honestly, this isn't terrible for Mind. I mean, he is getting a command center up pretty quickly. I think that maybe Best was a little bit too cavalier with his Zealots, because once a bunker's yeah. up over this expansion, you're having a much harder game. Yeah, and, like, honestly, when you get up to this Marine count, like, uh, you're not really afraid of the Zealots at all anymore. Um, he's gonna be completely fine and get his factory started pretty quickly. Uh, it, was, it was a good parry from Mind. Uh, you know, obviously, Best is is kind of dictating the flow of the game with that offensive gas and with some of the Zealot pressure. But Mind is is he's basically completely fine. Like he's done everything just right here. Yeah, I think if you get an expansion up like this after they take your gas, you're actually basically even. You you have to be very very careful to not overextend with the Zealots because if you get enough of them, you can actually force the Terran to make way more Marines than they want which don't really help you in the long run. Like, you want to get factories up. Um, if you're going to expand, you don't really need more than four Marines unless you're going to push. Uh, I don't know if you agree with that, Artosis, but, yeah, I mean, just forcing yeah. them to make excess of Marines is good because your Zealots do have more value later in the game than the Marines uh, have. They certainly do. The Marine the marine quality goes down. Like, you can make the bunker like we saw before if they're going mass speed shuttle or something, but... Uh, yeah, the thing is, when you're playing, when you get offensive gas, generally you end up having to make like seven Marines in that area, just because that's what it's going to take to not only, uh, you know, keep the Zealots off you and kill the Geyser and prevent a second Geyser, but also to walk down and actually take your natural. So it kind of uh, gives you this weird position where you have all these extra Marines and you're like, what do I do with these? Like, are we going to have a pressure attack coming out from mind? We might. Like, maybe he makes a siege tank and just kind of goes down and sees what he can get done. Yeah, I mean, that could be... I think it's a smart way to play. If you're forced to make Marines, you're like, well, maybe I could make make these tank uh, tank damage in an early attack here. Um, I, I didn't see... I don't know if you saw Artosis. Is he going to go for Reaver? Is Best teching the Reaver yet? Uh, I haven't seen it. Just it. Observer? Like, it. It looks like Observer to me, but I, I mean, mm -hmm. maybe he'll throw down... It's actually become really trendy lately to go Observer first into Reaver. That The later Reaver, oh, yeah. it's like a little bit hard to read because it just looks like, you know, the standard like two gate Observer stuff that you see all the time. And then suddenly they have a speed shuttle. And it's like, oh, <laughs> oh, OK. I wasn't expecting that. Yeah, I, I think it's a smart way to play, too. It, you know, a lot of times 
you get the Reaver early out, it doesn't really do anything, and, and you could have expanded or you know, teched up a little bit faster. So I kind of like it. Um, so we've got the third base being taken here. Um, we should mention on this map, a, a lot of times on this map, it really comes down to these three bridges and the fact that you can't cross it, but then therefore you also can't really take either of the middle bases. Like if they have siege tanks in the low ground, they can shell your nexus. Yeah. Uh, Terran has a hard time pushing across the three bridges. So do Protoss. That's true for both sides of the map. Uh, it's just hard to move large amounts of units through narrow areas in the game, which really gives a strong defender's advantage. Uh, it is it is really hard to get a, an attack off on those first three bases once you get a, a decent amount of supply. That is, that is for sure. Uh, but... You know, the, and the thing is that that map control you were discussing about, like that generally is going to go to Protoss, but even if you gain that map control, how many bases can you really get up? That's that's a big question because map control is more and more powerful depending on how many bases you can get behind it because that's kind right. of what it's good at, right? Is you keep your opponent back, you get extra resources, and then you can trade somewhat inefficiently. Uh, but even here, it, it's not like there's a ton of bases for best to take. We've got some Dragoons coming up. And um, doesn't look like he's really going to be taking a lot of damage, which is a relief, by the way. We've seen best get kind of kicked around early on by losing probes right away. It is going to be that Reaver tech that we've seen um, time and time again, probably with a multitude of shuttles, possibly even with another uh, Robo later on. Um, as speed shuttles are very popular nowadays. And um, yeah, Mind Tasteless is actually going for a five factory play here. He's got a lot of siege tanks. So he's going to try to hit a timing push. Um, I wasn't really expecting this, to be honest. Uh, sets up that turret there. That's like a pretty normal thing when you're going to hit a timing push. He's certainly going to attack. There's no way. There is no way in hell he's going to just take a third base here. Like, he has put so much money into these factories. He's made so many siege tanks early on, and it should just be five factory vulture behind now as he tries to push across the map. Yeah, I mean, he's going. I don't know if this is because of those extra marines he made our toes. <laughs> we'll see. He's going to push could, across it, the map that, right now. I think that's part of it, Tasteless, honestly. Like, you have all these extra marines. These are going to act as your anti-shuttle, and they'll do a good job of it, too. You can't just fly into that. Now, a lot of times, if you see this coming, what you want to do is try to get your Dragoons in between their reinforcement point and buy time. And we see Best beginning to set that up over here now. Um, the Reaver can keep de de dealing damage out here. He's going to send these Zealots forward. It's not exactly pretty. Um, oh, my God. The Dragoons hiccup for a second. Didn't get that first shot out. Oh, but man. he does. We don't, we don't have it on camera yet, but he does have Dragoons in the way. Yeah, right up here. Stopping the reinforcements is gigantic. Like, this is the main thing about the push is you need to reinforce it because otherwise, Bess Army is just going to get better. And look at that. Rallies right through. His Dragoon's going to kill those siege tanks. Big moment there for Best. And so the idea is that you want to try to gun, like, well, exactly this. This is the idea. So you, you snipe the reinforcements, you buy time, and you slowly muster up some more Dragoons, some more Zealots, and, and in, in a perfect world, Micro your Reaver just well enough that you get a few more shots off, that this push runs out of steam, and then you're on uh, two bases while they're on three. Oh, All right, sorry, you're on three bases while they're yeah. on two. Sorry. Game's this off. push looking very scary. The second turret not up in time to deny this Reaver getting out, and with the flank from that middle force, mine going to lose everything. This push is over. Best economy was not affected, and he takes a gigantic lead. This is really something else, man. Um, I think that this game is probably best game to lose at this point in time. If you hold off a powerful push like this, the, the tank drop is, has fallen so far. Um, it's so difficult to get a third command center up. And, you know, best, I, I, I got to say, showing a lot of patience there against a very scary push. But I think the truth is that Mind um, did not handle the, the pinch between the, uh, or I guess behind the push. Yeah. And I, I, I do like that he's mixing it up and trying to time an attack this time around, but this is sort of you playing in the best hands. Can't disagree with you there. Uh, maybe maybe if he, like, unseages the actual push, goes back, clears those Dragoons, maybe that's a situation in which he can end up taking a victory. But uh, certainly in this case, like, look at these supplies, 85 to 126. 
This is one of those games, you know, we've been talking a lot of trash on the, the mass sellout thing. But when you have an advantage like this, that's probably the best way to end the game. Oh, yeah. No, that, mass sellout is probably the textbook closer for this position. It's just mass up and, you know, if Terran tries to do anything on the map, you just run right in there and run him over. Yeah, the, you know, you need the, that, those early units. The, the tier one units need to run everything over at this point. You know, just mass them up and shove them down the ramp or across those bridges. Mind, like, he's trying to rotate some vultures around. Like, he doesn't really have enough supply to really do anything. He can't, like, even sacrificing these vultures for a lot of probes is probably not the right play because then he'll just die. Like, he's going to sacrifice them here, but, like, again, honestly, I don't, I don't think that this is good. Like, I, you need to get yourself up to 140 supply. That's like, that if you want to somehow win this game, get to 140, make sure you don't die to the next attack. And I don't think he's going to get there. Look at this. He's down over 50 supply right now. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's kind of hard to have a, a right play here, right? I mean, it's just, you're, you're, you're in so much trouble here. Uh, that being said, I do feel like, you know, this is a position mind can turtle from. I mean, we talked about how it's hard to attack across the bridges. It's also not easy to attack through depots and turrets in that area that kind of extends from the low ground to the high ground. So maybe we're in this game for a little bit longer. I think best airing on the side of caution. He's now going to try to come in here and clobber this position. Can he actually do it? I don't know. Well, it, it might be a bit wasteful, but when you're up 50 supply, that's, that's pretty significant. Ooh, that's a really good mine hit. Ouch. Yeah, that was nice. <laughs> This is the I most mean, defended thing I've ever seen, Tasteless. If you attack into this, it's like yeah, this just the worst always idea dumb. Ever. Yeah. It's like five depots, a turret, a, an eBay clothes covering up what may be a wall in mines. It's like, all right, yeah. this is just this is the only thing you don't want to do. But mine yeah. kind of has the idea of what he needs to do against somebody like Best is like basically really brace for impact and, and let him overextend. But I think Best is adapting. I think Best definitely respecting the the fact that you know this is not um, going to be a game that he's going to lose based off of an overextension. We may be we may be seeing him be done with overextensions from here on out. Yeah. It says oh, hold well. my beer, Tasteless. <laughs> I'm going to go tasteless. over this bridge. I'm not going to go over three bridges. I'm going to go over one and a half bridges. Uh, first. Yeah. This is like he is so eager to end this game right now. It's actually comical. Um. Like, and storming. you can see he's actually, he's doing okay with it. It's very inefficient and he's losing a lot, but look at the supply differential. It's still hugely in best favor. Can he storm these SCVs? I know that Templar doesn't quite have energy, but maybe there's another one inside of there. You know, again, it, it was not the prettiest attack, but you really gotta, you gotta hand it to best, man. Like he's able to do what I feel like other, um, other Protosses cannot, which is like even come in here and bust a position like this. Uh, of all, on, 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 a, on a map like this, it's kind of insane. Yeah, they, like uh, that, that that shows his, his macro prowess that he forces his way over the bridge like that. He's up in the main base storming things that are storming a unit at a time that's coming out of the factories. Like, Best is so sure he's won this game. Uh, he's being very sloppy about the finish, <laughs> but as long as there's a finish, there you go. Best getting himself back on that board once again with another win. It really makes me want to tinker with massing zealots like this. This isn't exactly how I do it. I make more dragoons and kind of play a longer game. But I look at this and I'm like, huh? Maybe that's maybe that's the way. Like <laughs> sometimes, um, sometimes. Yes, I mean, yeah, sometimes. You know, it's um. And now he's just coming through here, and oh my God, the reaver's gonna get in here. There's so much more damage getting dealt. Storm drops. Yeah, that, that's really it. Mine should GG here just any second now. Uh, you know, he tries again a very quick push. His two losses so far were were basically all ins from him. Like a two base, five factory, and then that other game on 76, the one base, you know, really weird dropship push. I think he needs a turtle more. Artosis is licking his lips right now thinking about this. <laughs> Artos is going to learn new ways to take a late third base and win with it. <laughs> so dumb. <laughs> That's it. GG. Best it brings the series a bit closer here. Uh, so now 2-3 to three is the map score.
Suddenly, I feel like it's anyone's series. Okay, before this game, I was like, oh god, the walls are closing in. But two, three, that this is legit. So far, so good. Um, now we're gonna go into our next map, which means if Best wins this, then it's all gonna come down to that last game. But that, I, I mean, yeah. it's becoming so evident what wins and what doesn't. And, and it does seem like if mine just really lays back, he can beat the kind of Dragoon front with mass zealots behind it. Mm -hmm. But does Best mix it up? Does Best do something different here? Both these guys have kind of been doing the same styles throughout the, the whole game, minus the, the, the slightly more aggressive games here from mine in mid game. Yeah. Yeah, uh, the next map I believe is Retro, and then if we finish it off with a Game 7, it would be Nemesis. Yeah. So kind of some interesting maps there. Uh, retro, you know, this is one of those four-player maps that has fewer bases, so uh, it might be a little bit harder for Best to get the number of bases he wants to try to this unit flood style, so I definitely want to see him be a bit more careful uh, in this next game if Mind goes for one of the more turtled-out defensive macro games that he's had so much success with here tonight been a great series. I'm glad to see Bess is coming back. Last Protoss, not upside down anymore <laughs> in the audience. Um, yeah, I mean, it's been a hell of a series. Hopefully we get to go to Game 7. I would really welcome that. Um, but yeah, man, I mean, it's it's been a wild night. Uh, again, though, I, my biggest takeaway so far is that Mind, it's almost too hard to comprehend how good he is. From all the games we've seen before, from all the previous ASLs where he got murdered in the round of 24, maybe he got to the round of 16. Right now, he is looking like he might be the best Terran in the world. Really, he has one of the most apt nicknames you could ever get, the Scholar Terran, where it's you can really see that he just knows what's going on and he knows what he's supposed to do and he just does those things. Uh, some of it, like his clear cut pushes, I, I'm thinking back to game number one where he cut straight up the map and killed 12 o'clock and that forced the win. Uh, you know, I'm thinking of just the way that he's slowing down, taking the expansions against the mass sellout so that he has enough units. He's not over sieging tanks or anything like that. Uh, he's putting down great defenses against shuttle run-ins. Uh, it's amazing to see. He's exhibiting such a deep understanding not just of the matchup but really of his opponent he's done the homework um now we're gonna go to game six we'll be right back guys don't go away Welcome back, everybody. The night continues on with game six about to start. Best needs to win here, or he's out in the last Protoss. The most unlikely Protoss, I'd say, out of the many great ones we've had in the season, he'll be falling. Um, and mind, I would say, also one of the unlikely Terrans coming into the season will actually be going into the finals. Well, uh, he's certainly worked hard to get there. His games have looked fantastic. His couple of rush builds have not worked. I doubt we're going to see that again on Retro. I think Mind is going to go back in to a more macro-oriented style. What does Best do, though? I feel like we haven't seen him really mix it up. His wins are against specifically rushes. So can he win the macro game? Yeah, that, it's a good point, Artosis. It seems like the macro game is going to the Terran. 
kind of crazy to say. Um, mine is just sort of waiting them out. Do we have a tech uh, ship? I do think Best is very versed in different ways of playing the game, but it seems like he was really committed to bustable parent play. You know, Reaver play, speed shuttles, speed lots, look for the weakness, and then hit that hit that soft spot, uh, spot excuse me. Um, and it's not working. But look, you can tech into Arbiters, you can DT rush, you can proxy gate, um, you can go for carriers. I mean, there's so many ways to play. Um, and mind, if I'm in, in his position, I'm just not going to be doing much different than what's already worked. Absolutely. Totally agree with that. Retro, definitely a kind of standard map. We are going to get into it and see, does mine go to the finals or do we get that epic game number seven? It's time. Just getting started. In the bottom right, we have Best. It's life on the line here in this game. In the bottom left, we have Mind looking to get to his first ASL Finals. Uh, and before we really get into it, guys, a big thank you to everyone who has supported us on the Patreon for ASL. We really appreciate you guys. Uh, if you've been on the fence, it's a great time to sign up. This ASL is not over yet. We have another season coming up this year as well, of course, that we're all looking forward to. Uh, check it out. Patreon.com forward slash ASL English. This is the best way to support us in the ASL uh, and getting it produced in English and out into the world. This game is a quarter of a century old, and it's still in competitive play. How insane is that? Uh, we have more of this game documented than any other game like it. We've got more stories, and we want to keep those stories going. Uh, and we want to do this for another 25 years, man. Um, so, I mean, with the support's appreciated. We love you guys. And, man, Artosis, i got to say, I'm just hoping Best can bring us to Game 7 here. Oh, me too. Me too. I, I think a Game 7 would be so epic, especially considering it's Nemesis, which is an insane map. <laughs> you know? Definitely plays a bit different. You can have some really weird stuff go on there. Uh, I'm just hoping that he changes his approach, because like, if he's just going to mass up Zealots again off of like 12 goons or so, it's just not working. It, like, it, Mine knows how to deal with it. It, it. You know, the thing is, it's a form of gateway, man. Which, you know, the reason why it's called Gateway Man uh, is because it's so silly. Where it's like, yeah, you just masked Gateway units. Well, it's not supposed to work. It works sometimes. But, like, is it supposed to? Is this supposed to be how the game is is done? Tier 1 and 1.5 units just running in mass towards your opponent? Like, uh, <laughs> I, I, I need to see him change what he's doing a little bit here. Well, um... You know, this map allows for a lot of different play styles. I do want to see best, you know, for instance, not try to go for, like, Nexus before Dragoon or maybe even Nexus before Dragoon range. I mean, try to play it safe. They are close together, so he shouldn't be tempted to, but mine seems to have a pretty sharp and, and pretty sophisticated understanding of, of when Protoss cuts corners, when they're weak, how they're weak, and what he can do to try to come in and punish that. Um... But and it's then such I, I'm an... curious about the late. Sorry, Artosis. I'm curious. Uh, curious about the late game tech here. Is yeah. it going to be that kind of speed lot style? Is it going to be the shuttle style? It's it's okay if he does it again, but he has to handle it differently. The problem with doing the style that Bess is doing is you get to a point where if you haven't attacked into them, you have to attack into them because all you have is zealots. You got <laughs> zealots so fast because they're cheaper than dragoons, uh, and so many of them that you're going to basically try to crash through. But if you're like mine and you just stay back and you really turtle and kind of don't engage, then they have to trade into you and you just kill off all their stuff. Yeah. That is that is the problem when you make an army like that. It's, it's for a timing. It does not necessarily scale that well. In this case, scaling poorly as Terran gets more units and just kind of sits there. Uh, so... I, I'm definitely on, on board with you on that one. Also, one thing I do want to mention, right? 
he's kind of combining a couple of ideas where, and again, it, it is pretty popular. Wow, he doesn't see the, the command Dude, center. I, you know, it's actually kind of big. Uh, yeah, the barracks is floating, I guess. You know. Yeah, it's it's, it's pretty straightforward that it has to be there. But, um, you know, he, the this speed shuttle style where you have like storms and reavers has a hard time finishing. You know, like you can do a lot to Terran, but like to actually kill them is incredibly difficult with that. So. Uh, when you're talking about that late game tech, I do wonder, can we maybe see more Arbiters? Could we... Is there any chance we see Carriers here? We can best best not really known for Carrier play, but, you know, if you get into a good position, that that is one of the best finishers that there is in the game. And he's very good with, with the Carrier play. I think Arbiter is um, a little bit out of style, at least in ASL. Um, you know, Arbiter was, I think, one of the first big late game styles that was figured out, but it does seem like if you're going to rely on just having a spell an Arbiter can cast, it, it, it seems like a good Terran is going to be able to EMP that or play around it. Uh, I think it's why we've seen the rise of the mass shuttle style pick up a little bit more is, you know, you're not relying on one unit that, frankly, you know, as good as an Arbiter is with its spells and everything, it's a pretty clunky unit. Like, it doesn't respond very fast. Um... It has a lot of hit points, but you know, it's it's not the most nimble thing. Um, by the way, we're seeing this like really funny small push with four Marines and a tank. Yeah. And uh, he has gotten to this weird high ground area where he can basically stay there and be safe. That's kind of hmm. funny, isn't it? That's not something yeah. that you see too often. It, it, like normally when you do a little push like this, it's to make room for your vultures to lay their mines. Uh, so I assume he's gonna turn around He's playing very carefully here, by the way. Like, this is incredibly well, carefully from mind. Uh, he, like, he's already got his engineering bay up. Uh, you know, he's he's taking it slowly. He is making the armory now, so he's definitely going for that upgrade Terran style. Hits that 44 of 44 supply block that every Terran knows and loves. Uh, and, <laughs> you know, it's <laughs> pretty standard from him, and honestly, pretty standard from Best as well. So the armory's going to finish... Again, these guys are next door neighbors. Um, seems like Bass is going to try to escort the probe over here to um, three o'clock and try to get the Nexus set up over there. This is, looks like the Vulture wants to try to come in here in between, maybe try to snipe, um, you know, uh, probes that are being transferred. A very, very textbook start, by the way. Very well played on both sides. The Protoss's Dragoon distribution is, is very nicely um, fanned out to protect from a drop in the most obvious air, uh, location that would be in the natural. The natural entrance is, is covered, and he's got two Dragoons oh, nearby the ramps. He's probably going to seal off one of these ramps with pylons so that vultures can't get up there. And the first observer is going to come across the map and try to figure out what on earth is Terran going to do here. Uh, note that the armory is at the natural. That's a really good place to put it in these spawns because if Protoss can't find it, they're not clear on what you're doing. Um, that's like one of the three buildings they're basically trying to find <laughs> to figure out what's going on. Hmm. And he is going to see it eventually over here at the natural. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm digging the opening on this game. Like, I know I, there's not nearly as much action as we've seen in some of these others, but it's like just progressing in such a normal way. Mm -hmm. uh, and I mean, it, I think that this is a really good test of players as well. Do you know how to nail this normal progression but realize that it's occurring on both sides and thus adjust it slightly right like do something where you get a little bit more greed where you get maybe your expansion is up a little bit quicker or you skip a couple units to power up a bit more so he's got his um robo so he's probably getting shuttle speed he's basically doing at least the starting point of the same build keep in mind when you see uh, you know third base and four gates coming up here in a shuttle and a reaver. That does not mean he has to go speed lots. That's what's happened, but that does not... It, it, no one says there's no rule in the game where you got to start trying to bust the Terran. So maybe if he tones it down a little bit um, and instead just tries to really focus on uh, I guess a little bit more of a, of a middle ground of getting a few more Dragoons, teching up, getting Psy Storm out here and, and doing more control play and less bust play. Maybe we have a better game for him. Oh, and the third command center starts. Yeah, nice and fast too. That's a that's a very fast third command, and uh, 
mind. Not really bleeding anything off. Best defense everywhere looks pretty perfect. Like his Dragoon spreads, he's got the ramps blocked, he's got pylon walls up. So the few speed vultures on the map really haven't found anything, and nor are they, right? Like they're, he's just running them around and keeping them just out of range as best he can, scouting what's around and everything. But like, yeah, this, this looks like neither of them, like this looks like it should be a long game, I guess is what I'm trying to say here. I agree, Artosis. I think this is going to be a long game. We've got eight gateways coming out here. This actually could be the Zealot play again. This really... But you know what? Maybe this is the right time to do it. That is a really quick third CC. Yeah. Um, there's the um, Citadel. And there's the fourth Nexus. This is going to be a fourth Nexus at the natural. Uh, not as common as people taking the main, but, you know... If you're going to be expanding pretty quickly in a game like this, you really want to make sure that you can reach your locations with vault, uh, you know, if vultures hit you. Mm -hmm. So this is fine to take, and then you just basically take the uh, the fifth base in the main later on. Speed shuttle flying around a little bit, just poking in, seeing what he can see. <laughs> I like the barracks floating over the command center. It looks so silly. Yeah. Uh, almost hides it if you just glance, but I'm sure he knows that it's there. Uh, a second robo getting started up, so we're definitely going heavy speed shuttles this time. Uh, hopefully we see the Templar Archives start up pretty soon as well, because it has felt like, even though he's liked a lot of speed shuttles, that maybe his High Templars have been a little bit late in some of these games as well. You know, as we're getting further in this game, I'm suddenly remembering the last time we saw Best play this, and Terran took a quick third base that looks impossible for Protoss to break, and then Best in very best fashion actually came in there and smashed it uh, maybe we have that this time around but you know if you look at the map uh, and, and see how narrow these bridges are you can really have a, a pretty nice appreciation for like uh how kind of sectioned off these parts of the map are it can look at, at a first glance like everything is connected right in the middle but there are these little land bridges that kind of connect across Ooh. The uh, Reaver going to be a bit annoying here, leapfrogging those siege tanks up about as quickly as he really can to try to push it back. Reaver getting a few scarabs off here and there. Little bit of damage to that Terran army incoming. Uh, no real way to clear this. Another situation, we talked about this before too, where a Wraith would be very, very helpful to just force this back. Yeah, I mean, I feel like a Wraith is the answer, is you just send a Wraith out and you don't even have to try to play this game. Artos, is, it's mass speed lots. <laughs> Well, you live by the sword, you die by the sword. But mostly you die by the sword. Uh, it, it, let's let's see what he can do. Like, this base up here, it's kind of funny looking, but we've seen a lot of Terrans completely wall it off, which would be incredibly strong against Matt Sella. Yeah, well, it seems like that's the answer. Um, and this may be just the way that Best goes down. Um, now, there aren't tanks up here yet. There are vultures coming up here. And you gotta be careful because, yeah, Goliaths are pretty good with the whole last second. Here we go. He's gonna come in now. Huge Ooh. amount of drops over here. Yeah, the Zealot's getting onto the high ground with those Dragoons as well. That's a lot of Vultures and Tanks coming up, though. The Dragoons going towards that command center, but I think he holds the command pretty easily from here. There's not enough Zealots to really tank these tank hits. Yeah, and, you know, he is going to drive the workers away for a little bit, so I guess this isn't totally in vain. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm a little bit stunned to see that Bess is going to try to force it in these, like, tiny little spots. I know I mentioned earlier he did break. Suddenly I can't remember which Terran off the top of my head, but he did break a position here. But um, the, the CC is not mining. So, I mean, that that's pretty good. And he doesn't really have control over the ramp the same way he did before. So I think you can traffic more units up here. There are a couple of uh, vultures coming out, and, and with a dropship that I have to imagine has two tanks in it. That's oh amazing. God. Look at this. Oh, God. This is going to be huge damage to best. The probes are trying to run. He targets them with the tanks oh. and kills almost all of them off. In the meantime, best going for a counter here down the ramp. He has a, a ton of zealots charging in as well, getting on top of some of these siege tanks. But I think mind is going to hold here as well. I think he is. I mean, you can see that. Uh, Mind has just been so patient not sieging all of his tanks until it's the appropriate time. And right when all of his siege tanks are killed, he sieges up the unsieged ones, and it's like a big reset button. 
And now this drop, this is a, a kind of an old school way to play where you roam the map with a drop ship and, and a bunch of vultures. And usually it's easy to clean up, but it's only easy, excuse me, only easy to clean up if you're actually going um, for mass dragoons and doing control play. If you're going to go for speed lot, it's actually a headache. Oh, oh man. He is killing so many probes. He killed that Nexus in the top right as well. Best being dismantled at the moment. Now, the only thing going on for Best that we do need to mention... Dude, no third base. Did he lose yeah. the command? Okay, the command center is actually on fire floating elsewhere. <laughs> He's giving up that, that base at 9 and going down towards 6 o'clock where Best is trying to expand. So, you know, it, uh, uh, Mind has played extremely well, but um, Best is still in this game. The third base, yeah, like you said, Artos is not being Mind. Um... I think there should be considerably less workers this game. But if they're even in supplies, that would also lead me to believe that Vess probably ha actually has more uh, attacking units. Yeah. Yeah, they, well, he's he's lost so many probes. We've seen them go down. The siege tank drop over at three. He killed, like, basically every probe that was at his his uh, fourth base up in, in the top right natural. Uh, so certainly his standing army is strong. And... That's good in some ways, but you got to be careful. If you lose it, you're not going to be able to refill it that well because your probes are so low. Yeah, and, you know, with four speed shuttles out, you're not that safe as Terran. If the if the Protoss can blindside you and, and then dump all of their units from their shuttles on top of your tanks, like, you can just die. So this isn't that cut and dry just yet. No, certainly not. Uh, up come the siege tanks here. A lot, uh, lot of Goliaths trying to cover these. We'll see if he can target down those speed shuttles as they come in. There's at least four speed shuttles that Best has ready for a, a foursome defense here. Okay, so he could also... No, maybe he probably can't counterattack. Okay, he's fanning out the shuttles, which usually means he's about to run in. you got to make sure you click unload on each of these. Oh, my God. That was a oh sick god. drop there to clear those that mines. And he gets great. some Psy oh. Storms oh oh my god. on Hold top up. of the tanks! Hold the phone. Hold on. Artosis, he's, is he oh, going to do this? Well, his goons from the high ground a little bit late on joining the party. And it looks like Mind just barely going to hold on here. He's so good with the unsieges. Yeah. No shared splash damage there going to come back in. These are Templars with Storm available. All right, gets one off on that tank to the side. Can't hit two at once, but Mine's army remains tasteless. I think that Mind is going to be going to the ASL finals. Like, he doesn't have a third base mining, but he has been so efficient at knocking out Best army. Yeah, he's just playing too well. And... I mean, I, I don't even know where the probe count would be. There's been so many killed off over here. The only thing that Best has is a third base, and the truth is there's, just, there's too many tanks, and, and the tanks right now are basically too upgraded. It's plus three attack, plus two armor. It is like an endgame Terran army where the third base has just been retaken. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 17 minutes, we're finally going to be mining. It should always be mining by 12 minutes, but then perspective. But mine dealt so much damage to Best. Yeah. You know, Best, he, he's, he's still got some mining bases, so he's still in this game. He's still trying to make something happen. But the positions look too well turtled, right? Like, even before when it looked like he might break him, he wasn't quite able to do it. So now when you look at that spot and how well defended it is, it's hard to imagine Best getting in there and breaking it. No, I think that ship has sailed, Artosis. Oh, my God, the Templars. Great snipe their two shots you know there, it, there's no real way to get out of this position as best except to try to like do the same thing again if he could break this that would be the only mining base so there's that the problem is yeah. i think that literally he just doesn't have enough that i think if, if these armies fought each other and there was like just tanks unseized and no mines and vultures i still think that the terran probably wins the fight with the yeah. upgrades alone you might be right that's the issue yeah it's yeah. like it's just it's not really about finesse anymore Mm -hmm. Okay, what do you think about Best maybe uh, counterattacking as hard as he can towards the natural? Uh, I mean, I think that's a cool idea. I don't. I think that we're actually just too far gone. 
to be honest. I yeah, mean, you I, might. I, I, I want to yeah. hype this, but I, I look at this and I, from the Protoss' perspective, I go, oh god, what are you going to do? Are you going to take a fourth base? Yeah, right. Are you going to counterattack? I don't think so. Are you going to hit the expansion? Probably not. I mean, I think he has to try to do something, right? Yeah. You can't yeah. even really drop in the main. There's not an easy way to get into that. <laughs> yeah, everything's pretty pretty covered here for mine. His, his defensive positions are incredibly strong. Best finally takes a supply lead after a long time of being even here. But yeah, I don't I don't see a great way in. It looks like he is going to finally try to attack. This might be the final attack of this match. In he comes. He has a lot of Psy Storms. Let's see if he gets some off here. Uh, the Vulture is microing back. Oh, oh man. My God. That's going to be it. This has been a dominant performance. That mind is going to the finals. I cannot believe it, Artosis. I know. It's like an and alternate for me personally, timeline. This is, yeah, this is yet another upset. I was so confident with how well Best was playing that there was no way Mind could take him on. And Mind is just playing beautifully. Well, and, and just letting the game kind of lead him to victory. It's really time to put Mind's conversation into the Best Terrans list, you know? You're like, yeah. he, you watching this? Is Light better than this? I think maybe, but I mean, Mind is the one that's here, you know? Mind is playing these yeah. games that are unbelievable right now. His decision-making is certainly not overshadowed by any current active Terran player. And I mean, his macro is really, really good as well. He's getting into these weird spots too. This is not the first game where he had a very hard to get late third base. And look at this, now pushing in, and this is how he wants to kind of force the victory. He did this as well on map number one, and now he's doing it on map number six, expanding to the center of the map. Yeah. And just saying, okay, I'm controlling everything. Yeah. Now I'm out in the middle of the map. Come try me out. Uh, what a great series this has been. You know, I, I hate to cast as if this is over, but it, it's very hard to <laughs> kind of envision a game where, where the Protoss wins. I'm sure we could have another great attack from Best here, but, you know, at the end of the day, when Terran gets this upgraded, yeah, it's very hard to trade into him. Let's see what he can do with this now. Keep in mind that this is going to be everything Protoss has, and Terran, a, a lot of their stuff is still at 6 o'clock, so maybe mm. he can do something. Well, an EMP goes off there. He pulls the shuttle back as to not get picked off. Good D matrix on one of those front tanks. Storming some of the SCVs. I'm not sure that that's that helpful right now. The last few yeah. storms are going down, and the position not even really dented here for mine. Yeah, I mean, he's fine. I understand the impulse to storm the SCVs, but really you want to storm the tanks and the vultures and then have your dragoons clean it up. But you can see no matter how you cut it, Terran just has too much. Yeah, best is sub 100 supply. Mine supply is not particularly high, but he's just he's mining very, very well at the moment. Best going to try another attack in here with those Zealots. You can see they're not doing that much damage against the high armor upgrades, unfortunately. And of course, mine has unseaged everything as well. Oh man, the Archon pops. Best retreating with his last few units. And you know, this, this Protoss player that we've been saying for many seasons deserves a victory. Again, not going to find it. Not this time, maybe in season 16, but right now, um, you know, it, it, it's mine. He's kind of stolen the show here. And you can see Best basically going through the motions. So Terran's going to scan and see that there is a base up there. He can probably push into that. I think a third base even right now for Best should be mining out shortly. Um, and, I mean, I'm just stunned at the performance here of mine. Of all people, I mean, if he wins this, this is going to be the biggest, I think, surprise victory of any yeah. ASL we've ever had. And it's not that we didn't think mine was good before. We just didn't think he was the best in the whole world, okay? Sorry about that, fans of mine. But um, this is a pretty insane plot twist. Uh, and even beating Best. Best to beat so many good players to get to where he is. Um, what? And you can even see their both processing it. GG. Best loses and mind will go on to the finals of the ASL season 15 2023 um unreal what I, a, I'm speechless yeah. what a sick run it, it, like it, just a sick sick run for mine to make it all the way to the finals uh, amazingly done here he's got to be yeah. feeling so proud as well like he's really getting back 
to where he was meant to be tasteless. He's one of the chosen ones. His career didn't work out as well as it should have, only a one-time champion, but he's looking to fix it this season. This is wild. I remember watching this guy when I was the later part of high school, the early part of college, and just being so um, inspired by his play. And of course, Best, who has, you know, looked so good sometimes, it just didn't quite fill in all, all the uh, parts of the picture to, to be an ASL finalist. He got so close this time, but ultimately he kind of, uh, you know, relied on this one fundamental approach to the game that Mine had prepared for so thoroughly. Yes, get over there, Mine. He prepared <laughs> so thoroughly, um, and he's going to be in the finals. I mean, it, it's been over a decade since this guy's been in the finals. Yeah. Uh, it, just it, it, well over a decade. I want to yeah, well, say actually, it was what like 2006. This would be like, <laughs> like 15 years, 17 years. No, you're right. Sorry. It's, it's been so long ago. It's so long ago that everything, you know, it's, I, I'm almost like mixing all the times together. You're right. Yeah, it's been really long since he's done this. Yeah, yeah. Um, and well, uh, he just, it's, go ahead. It, it's just great to see him back, back in form, like he, playing the style that we know he likes to play too. It's not that his macro or his micro is overwhelming. It's that he's doing all these very intelligent things that his opponents have our time with. You know, I think particularly this game, like things were going wrong for him, and then he did that dropship vulture thing to the top right, and it just destroyed and allowed him into a position like what we're watching here, where it's like, yeah, he doesn't have much economy. Yeah, Best is having a good engage, but the damage already dealt to Best has made this pretty much impossible for him. It, it really taught me a lot, actually. Because, um, you know, I, I've definitely experienced those games where people roam with the drop ships and the vultures, and I've never really had as much of a hard time with it unless I, like, wall myself out of, like, one of my, one of my like, high ground bases and they drop in there. Um, but then you look at this and you go, yeah, if they're just making zealots, well, they just go set up a position that zealots can't break, mm. which is, like, you know, seven or eight vultures and two tanks and a drop ship. You know, where the vultures have, the zealots have to run through everything and they get wasted. Um, and, and yeah, I mean, he just, he has a great handle uh, on kind of how to approach this. He stayed patient. He gave up on the third base when he realized Best just wasn't going to let him have it. And instead focused his energy on taking out the fourth base. Um, and, you know, his upgrades basically won him the game in the end. I don't even know what the upgrades were for, uh, for Protoss. Maybe two, two, two to zero or something. Yeah, Anyways, interview time, guys. Let's see how mine is feeling. Anyways, interview time, guys. Let's see how mine is feeling. 2007년에 그 최고의 포스를 보여줬던 박성균이 2023년에 ASL 결승 무대 올라가게 되었습니다. 박성균 선수 축하드리고요. 진출 소감 들어보도록 하겠습니다. 어 일단 기분이 좋네요. 아 생각보다 어 기분이 더 좋고 오늘 진짜 힘들 거라 생각했거든요. 근데 어 제가 올라가니까 저도 신기한데요. 네. <웃음> 정말 이 힘든 시즌이고 까다운 선수들도 굉장히 많았고 어려움이 있었는데 아니 이렇게 박성균 선수가 돌아와서 예전 그 전성기 때 포스를 다시 보여주게 된그 원동력이 너무 궁금해 무슨 일이 있었습니까? 어 일단은 아무래도 저녁 야, 저녁 후에 이제 이게 두 번째 ASL인데 제가 오히려 이제 게임에 대한 욕심이 많이 생겼어요 저녁 후에 그 전에는 사실 이게 미필이라 그런가 게임에 욕심이 많이 안 생기더라고요. 어차피 그냥 하다가 어차피 뭐 이제 갈 텐데 이 생각이었는데 지금은 오히려 이제 게임에 욕심 너무 많이 생겨서 최근에도 막 게임 진짜 많이 하고 다른 사람 게임도 많이 보고 하거든요. 그게 좀 이제 대회 때잘 나온 것 같아요. 네. 또 수많은 팬분들의 그 응원이 좀 있었고 어, 또 이제 항상 이렇게 경기장 직관해 주면서 계속 이겨라 이겨라 응원의 메시지 보내주시는 그 지인분들 많이 계시잖아요. 그분들에게도 감사 인사 부탁드리겠습니다. 네, 오늘도 별비랑 또 여기 친구, 또 친구들 많이 응원 왔어요. 너무 고맙고 네, 또 이제 별비가 평소에 진짜 많이 챙겨주거든요. 대회 준비하고 이럴 때도 그래서 덕분에 올라간 것 같네요. 네, 고맙다고 말하고 싶습니다. 네. 그리고 오늘 시작전 인터뷰에서 사실상 오늘 결승전이다. 상대가 지금 정영재 선수, 조일장 선수를 기다리고 있거든요. 그럼 그 경기도 네. 누가 올라오든지 이번 시즌 우승 박성균 선수가 강한 자신감 내비칠 것 같은데 어떠세요? 
어 일단 반대 쪽이 이제 영재랑 일장형인데 솔직히, 솔직히 뭐둘다 쉬운 상대가 아니에요. 제가 이제 재욱이 형이 너무 세다 보니까 그 둘보다는 이제 사강이 빡세다 했던 건데 음. 준비 잘하면은 근데 충분히 이길 수 있을 것 같습니다. 네, 그렇다면 박성민 선수가 보시기에는 누가 올라오길 바랍니까? 누가 올라올 것 같아요? 저는 저희 다음 시즌 맵을 위해서 일장형이 올라왔으면 좋겠고요. 오 네, 영재가 올라오면은 다음 시즌 더 힘들 것 같아서 네. 그냥 뭐 일장형이 올라오는 게 좋을 것 같아요. 네. 네. 다시 한번 축하 말씀드리고 그럼 끝으로 현장에서 응원해 주신 팬분들에게도 감사 인사 부탁드리겠습니다. 아, 네. 팬분들 너무 감사하고요. 또 이번에 이제 진짜 응원 많이 해주셨어요. 다들 이제 어, 꼭 결승 가라고 응원 많이 해주셨는데 너무 감사드리고 아직 뭐 끝난 건 아니에요. 이제 결승만 남았는데 결승 무대에서도 꼭 좋은 모습 보여드리도록 하겠습니다. 네, 네. 다시 한번 축하 말씀드리고 도고른 플레이. 네. 와 오늘 독이 넘쳤거든요. 아, 그리고 네. 때또 연습 도와준 우리 병구 형이랑 또 수철이랑 선재랑 윤철이랑 우리 윤중이 형까지 너무 이제 덕분에 올라간 것 같아요. 그래서 고맙다는 말 전하고 싶고 그리고 윤중이 형이 제가 연습 도와달라고 하니까 자꾸 자기 이제 요즘 못 한다고 도움이 안될 거라고 하는 거예요. 그래서 저는 이제 이 형이 그냥 연습 도와주기 싫어서 핑계 대나 했는데 진짜 자신감이 좀 많이 떨어졌더라고요. 근데 이제 어. 윤중이 형도 좀 자신감 없고 네, 더 잘해줬으면 좋겠습니다. 네. 네, 다시 한번 축하의 말씀 드리고요. 결승전대 뵙겠습니다. 축하드립니다. 네, 감사합니다. 네. 와, 진짜 오늘 보여준 박성근 선수 경기력 보면 대박. Well, there you hear it, man. How exciting is this? We've got mind going into the finals. Um, in in what has just been the craziest drama ever here for ASL season 15. He may actually be the ASL champion. He certainly <laughs> looks like the best Terran. Um, and, and, you know, what a surprise to have this Terran of, of... After we don't have Flash, then we see Light play so well. We've got Royal and Rush, who looks so up and coming. Another Terran comes out here in our finals. Yeah. Man. Yeah, he's, he's peaking so well right now. It's kind of crazy. When those other Terrans have fallen very early in the tournament, you know, Rush, Royal, Light, not making as deep as we would thought. The two remaining Terrans, though, looking very, very strong. This guy really might be the champion, Tasteless. It's hard to imagine anyone beating the type of way he's playing because we're not really seeing mistakes. His play isn't yeah. perfect, but there's no real mistakes going on. No, there's no obvious pitfall in his play where, you know, as strong as best looked, there was a big glaring Achilles heel there. Uh, and mine hit that so many times. And that's really the, the, the coolest way to see somebody win a game of StarCraft is to see the weakness, execute the strategy, play the tactics out, and come out on top. And, yeah. um, you know, I mean, let's keep in mind that, you know, one of the only games that best won was on an island map where the two factory got bungled. <laughs> that's you know, true. Uh, yeah. That's true. Yeah. And then, and the, then he the, stopped a five factory all in, you know. Yeah. It really. Honestly, it wasn't that great of a performance from Best. He had a few moments of brilliance, but I think he needs to have a wider range of what he can do. That's something I really noticed, right? Like, when you watch Mini's runs, like, I mean, there's problems with Mini where he dies early because he's taken too many risks, but the guy has a right. lot of different build orders, right? He has a lot of abusive stuff mined out to you or lined up to use. Uh, and it just we didn't see that from Bess. It was mostly just like two gate observer. Here's some Reaver speed shell. Here's mass sell off. And it's like, well, yeah, you can't just do one thing and win a best of seven against one of the top four players in the world at the time. That's not. That's really not how it's supposed to go. And it seemed like every passing game, Mind was more equipped to deal with it. It's why we say that you have to have a couple different styles to come out in a best of five or best of seven. Yeah. Because otherwise, you know. People will adapt. People know it. It's like why map hacks are so good. They see what you're going to do. They know what you're going to do. They can stop <laughs> it. Um, we're going to get this recorded in 24 hours from when this has been recorded. Up next is Hero versus JYJ. Yeah, this should be a really, really good one. JYJ already showed off everything he does in Terran vs. Zerg while going up against Sulky, who is kind of a similar late game Zerg style uh, to Hero. So Hero has a lot of information on how JYJ plays, but JYJ is so brutally strong that 
I think that's what makes this such a fun matchup. It's like maybe the smartest Zerg with all the information going up against the strongest macro TVZ player out there. Yeah, I mean, whether it's a TVZ or a TBT Finals, I'm fine with it. This has been so fun. Um, and with Hero and, and, and JYJ, this is going to be one where I think we're going to really get to explore how the matchup works. I do think that it turns out, at least, and look, we, we may be wrong as we cast this upcoming best of seven, but it did seem like best was the most lopsided in his presentation. Certainly mine had kind of tightened all the screws and was ready yeah. to engage with whatever came his way. Um, I think this TVZ should be a pretty epic one and a pretty cool one to see how the modern approach from each side uh, is going to be. I think so, too. I, I, it's going to be a really, really exciting match, so make sure you guys tune into that. Thank you again to everyone who supports us on the Patreon. You guys are the best. We love you guys. Patreon.com forward slash ASL English, and we will see you as soon as this recording's done for the next uh, best of seven. See who's actually going to go up against mine in the finals. Take care. We love you. Bye-bye.